Welcome to the Sewing Report. I'm Jen and we are live from the sewing room. We are continuing the quest to make handbag scarves. This is going to be kind of a live casual sewing chat and hangout. So you're welcome to come join in for as little or as long as you want. I'll probably be streaming most of the day. If you are new here, that's sort of the deal. You're welcome to comment, leave questions about pretty much anything. And basically you're watching a chick sew in a sewing studio in Florida. Uh, so if you sew or not, that's totally cool. We are streaming live on multiple platforms today. Yes, we are get, I'm getting it in gear. We are streaming live on YouTube, Twitch, and Rumble. Uh, so we're going to be checking in on all of those chats. Uh, it might be a little hard to keep track, so we will see. But hello, everyone. So we're going to be making these really cute purse scarves or handbag scarves. I made a few the other day, and I am going to be selling these in my Etsy shop, which brings us to today's live stream sponsor, the Sewing Report Etsy shop, where you can find fabric, sewing supplies, and now luxury handmade gifts, including these curved zippered pouches I made last week. So that's sort of the plan. I'm experimenting with handmade items. So lots of fun, but we've got, so we've got some sales going on on some of the items. The uh, Sew Tights Magnet, magnet uh, pin cushions are a very popular item this week. We have fabric bundles, pins, sewing machine needles, vinyl for sewing and embroidery. So lots of stuff. Check it out. This channel, Sewing Report Live, is not yet monetized. So hey, we got to pay the bills where we can. So check out the Sewing Report Etsy shop, which is the sponsor of today's live stream. And I'm really excited because we are up to over 300 subscribers on this brand new channel, which is super exciting. We have about 700 to go and quite a bit of watch time until we can get monetized. Uh, so help us out here. If you are new, I'd really appreciate a subscribe, a like on this live stream. And, and yes, we'd love, I'd love to have you here. I have a main channel called The Sewing Report, but this channel is, uh, as it advertises, this is all live all the time. Uh, we're gonna have some fun and I just wanted to do live streams while I worked on stuff. Uh, also, I wanted a place where sewists or just anyone who's curious about sewing can come hang out, join the chat and just have fun. This is not really a classroom instructional type live stream. This is more of a just casual calm hangout, kind of check it out. If you don't know much about sewing, you can, you can maybe learn, ask questions, we also have, this is a multiple camera production, guys. So if you are new, again, this is camera one. This is sort of a head-on camera. We've got camera two. This is an overhead camera. So you will be able to see what I'm doing because I wanted that to be the thing. So I didn't want to do this unless I could have a clear way so people could see what was going on. Uh, so that's camera two. We've got camera three, the sewing machine action camera. Yeah, lots of fun there. And we've got a picture in picture camera with the overhead camera and um, you, can, you can kind of see me in the, in the corner here. So let me know what you think. Is this fun? Is this something you're gonna enjoy? But welcome, this is your, if this is your first time here, I'm Jen and this is Sewing Report Live. We're gonna check to make sure we are streaming on Twitch. Okay, yeah, it looks like the Twitch stream is is okay. Uh, we had like no viewers on Twitch, but hey, you know what? You got to you gotta start from zero. So, all right, it looks like the Twitch stream is okay. Wow, the quality on Twitch seems really low though. Uh, so I'm just kind of new to, I haven't streamed on Twitch in like five years. Uh, so that's been kind of interesting, right? Uh, so we're going to be making purse scarves today. This is something I started on Sunday. And this, you know, I just thought, hey, I'm here hanging out. I got my hair done and everything. So I thought, you know, why not just hang out? So I'm making two types of handbag scarves and I have two on this purse right here. So I have, um, I'm making one with angled ends. This is reminiscent of the Hermes Twilly, which sells for over, these are usually over $200 if you're looking at luxury brands. And then I'm also making this type with more blunt ends. This is the Louis Vuitton bandeau style. But guys, you don't have to pay over $200 for a, 
for a purse scarf, you can just you know get some get some get some extra fabric you have laying around and, and make your own for a fraction of the cost. So I have a few pieces cut up and ready to go. The dimensions are down in the description box. Also, I've linked to some of the products I will be using. So the raw piece of fabric I have, this is a Cloud9 Fabrics Rayon. It's a really nice fabric to work with. It behaves a bit like silk, but I think it's a little more sturdy and easier to work with, in my opinion. You can also glue baste it, which is another key factor for me. And my piece I have cut out is about five inches wide by 37 inches long. And you will get a finished scarf that's about two inches, a little over two inches wide and about 36 inches long. Basically, I looked at the designer scarves on the websites and I just was like, okay, I'll just pretty much copy the dimensions. And this is a pretty simple project. It doesn't take super long. So I'm gonna be making a few at a time. The other day, if you wanna go back and watch uh, Sunday stream, I made more of the angled versions. I'm also working on cutting down the highlights for the Sewing Report main channel. Uh, today, I thought I would work on the more blunt end style, just because I think I have six of the angled ones. Uh, so we're gonna be hanging out today. Let me put my purse aside for a little bit, but this is what you'll end up with. I've tied, so you can use these scarves to cover the handles of your bag. You can also tie a bow around one handle. So I'll kind of show you one style right here. All right, so. All right, and my bunny is making some noise in the back, so that's kind of interesting. So she might be doing some stuff. Okay, so let me take one of the angled ones, and I'm gonna show you how to another way to wrap it. Okay, so I'm gonna, you know, kind of fold this in half. Uh, all right, let's see here. We will start over here. All right, and I kind of saw this. So, so you, what you do is you start wrapping the handle. So this is just another way to do it. All right, let's see here. I don't know if I can do, I saw this in a video. I don't know if I'm gonna do this right, but we're gonna try. Um, so this is kind of, if you want to wrap it, if you wanna sort of wrap it and then have, oops, okay, and that is the door. I don't know who that is. We're not gonna get that though, cause I'm home alone. And then you can tie it like this. So lots of different ways you can do this. So this is just one example, uh, but I, I kind of wrapped the handle on the other side and then I used a second scarf as a bow. So it's just an example of some things you can do. Okay, so let's take this off. This is, these are just my example scarves here. So we're, I'm just gonna be making a few of these. We'll make a few at a time. I need to get my trash can though and then get my lint roller. Uh, the one thing about working with this rayon Again, it's very nice, it's very drapey. You wanna use like a woven fabric if you're gonna be doing this. Woven, sort of drapey, more lightweight. This can be a little difficult to work with. That's why I personally like using the Rand because I can glue baste it using Elmer's washable school glue. And oh, and I need to turn my iron on. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. But yeah, isn't this super cute? So this is what we'll end up with. And I am excited. All right, so let me get some supplies ready here. All right, I'm gonna put my purse somewhere else here. All right, actually, we'll just put the purse over here. All right, we'll do that. I need to get my trash can out. Guys, we need to get, we're ready to sew today. How's everybody doing? We are ready to sew. Okay, okay, I just blocked the camera there, so that was fun. All right, let me get my trash can. I need to get some stuff ready here. I need to get my lint roller. I might have to take a bathroom break at some point. I kind of have to have to go to the bathroom. Well, we'll see how long this lasts. I don't know. All right, let me get my, this is my pressing board here. And if you have any questions about the setup or about supplies, let me know in the chat or in the comments if you are watching this on the replay. Uh, yeah, this, this fabric does kind of shed a bit. Like you get a lot of loose threads. Just something to keep in mind if you're doing this. Let me get my glue bottle. And I do have a few of these bottles in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. So if you are looking for something to glue base with these, come in handy. I use this all the time. Let me tell you, all, literally all the time. All right, so, oh, and I need a marking pen too. All right, guys, I need some supplies here. All right, I'm gonna use my red, like pink Choco pen today. 
Let me get some of these guys. So I need my white pen and then I need my, where's my pink one? All right, and I just keep my, this is just like a glass from Ikea that I keep stuff in. It was very cheap. So yeah, if you have any questions, drop it in the chat. Okay, so first thing I usually like to do is fold this in half. And this, again, I am repeating stuff from the other day just for anyone who's joining that was not here on Sunday. Uh, so if you were here on Sunday, uh, forgive me, uh, you're gonna be sort of getting a repeat, but hopefully there are some new people who join in. Yeah, I can, my rabbit is chewing, she's chewing something, hopefully she's not chewing anything she's not supposed to. My rabbit's chewing some stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna find the center point here. All right. And I'm basically just using that as a guide on where I need to fold things over. All right, so you're going to be folding this right sides together on the long side. So you see I'm using the center point to kind of know where I need, where my fabric needs to go on the other side. So there's really no guesswork. And I'm going to mark a point for turning about, about like two and a half inches wide here. So your finished scarf will have a little bit of vis visible stitching, but I'm using coordinating thread so it blends in really well. Here, I'll show you. So this is the, hopefully my camera can focus it. This is the finished stitching here. Again, it's a tiny section. It's only like two and a half inches, but I figured you can, you can hand sew these closed so you have no visible stitching, but you know, I, I feel like the time investment in my opinion was not really worth it. So I chose to machine close the opening. Uh, but again, if you're using a matching thread, you'll really barely be able to see it. Okay. So let's get started. We're going to make a few at a time. We're making the blunt ends. Okay. So I have marked, all right. Yeah, you can, I might need to mark this a little bit more just to be able to see it better. So, and these pens are available in the Etsy shop. They are air and water soluble. So the marking, this is a disappearing ink pen basically. And I'm just gonna start glue basting here. Okay, let's see here. But yeah, you can see, I like this method because there's no pins or clips because this fabric really tends to shift around quite a bit. And I find that glue basting is just the easiest way for me to sew with rayon. All right, I'm marking, lining up the center points here. So you just have to kind of line this up and go, kind of go down the whole length, do a thin line of glue and then hit it with a dry iron and do this all the way around. And then we'll also be trimming these ends here. All right. But if you're new here, welcome to Sewing Report Live. Live from the sewing room in Florida. It's like 85 degrees out too. It's pretty, it's pretty warm out today. I just went to get the mail. So that was interesting. All right, I'm just gonna go all around. Also, I think this might be heat soluble too. So with the white pen I have for dark fabrics, I noticed that the iron uh, took away the marks. That was kind of interesting. Okay, so let's just go all the way down here. Using this, and this is just really this is literally the cheapo Elmer's washable school glue. Uh, the re this was a quilt basting tip I got years ago uh, from another quilter, and the glue is cheap. It washes out because Elmer's washable school glue is really just like starch. And if you just put it in like a finer gl tip glue bottle, you can be pretty precise. Uh, but I use this all the time, especially when I'm quilting to get more accurate piecing. And you don't have to mess, the fact that you don't have to remove pins is amazing. The fabric stays in place, it doesn't shift around. Really nice, I have a few of these glue bottles in the Etsy shop still. I also have all, all, all of these marking pens. So if you are looking for something, check it out. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make a few today. I have like a bunch cut. Uh, and then I need to photograph them and list them for the Etsy shop. So that will be happening soon. Let's see if we have any, do we have any Twitch viewers today? We had like no Twitch viewers the other day. All right, we have like one Twitch viewer. If you're watching on Twitch, welcome. I've got one Twitch viewer and then the other one is me monitoring uh, the stream. So that's a lot of fun, right? 
Uh, but yeah, I figured if I'm streaming on one platform, I might as well be streaming on like a, you know, a bunch, you know, to try to diversify and, and basically be everywhere. So that's sort of the, the plan behind this. You know, maybe people, I figure, you know, who knows, maybe people on Twitch would like this. I have no idea. And I, I needed to change. I haven't been on Twitch in years, so I had to, like, update the profile and stuff. All right, am I streaming under the... Okay, Maker, yeah. So I there's categories on Twitch, and I was trying to stream under... I was stream, streaming under art the other day. But I think Makers and Crafting just makes, like, a lot more sense. Uh, so we're doing that today. Let me see if I can change the quality. Okay, it is 1080. Okay, the quality on Twitch looks sort of dicey. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, guys. All right, we are recording. All right, I got to check. I have no producer, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how this goes, right? All right, so we are about down to the end here, and we're just going to do a bunch of these, and then we'll trim them all at once. So I'm going to make, like, you know, a bunch of ones with the blunt ends. I'm going to list both in the Etsy shop and see which, like, which one sells the best, I guess. I don't know. All right, so let's go to the other side. Yeah, see, I've got a bunch of these. I just have, like, a ton. All right, I might need to move my trash can a little out of the way. I just have a bunch of these little, like, loose threads, and that's kind of, it's honestly kind of annoying, but it'll be all right. And I'm going to be sewing with about a quarter-inch seam allowance today. All right, here we go. Got lots of glue. And I'm just putting, like, a thin line of glue right on the edge so it doesn't, you know, so it doesn't go past my seam allowance. All right. Oh, we got a spammer on Twitch. Okay. Hi, I want to offer a promotion of your channel. View Viewers, followers, views, chatbots. The price is lower. All right. No, thank you. Uh, whoever you are. No, thank you. All right. All right. So the person watching on Twitch is clearly a weird spammer, but that's all right. You know, hey, any, any, I guess any viewership is good, right? I don't know. But yeah, I've been working on it. You know, I feel bad because I haven't been making any more scarves on Sunday. I've been editing the video for it from the live stream. So that's been taking up like most of the time. And if you're watching on Rumble, welcome. This is kind of a new, like a newer thing over there too. I accidentally streamed on Rumble though to my, so you can stream to your username or to your channel. And I accidentally streamed from my username on Sunday. Uh, so I had to kind of figure out what I did wrong and then fix it. So but I'm monitoring that chat too, so if you leave me a comment on Rumble, I can't put it up on the, on the screen like I can with Twitch and YouTube because it's not integrated with my StreamYard software, but I can at least read that chat. All right, so this is gonna be my opening for turning. All right, so really all I'm gonna be doing is sewing a line down here to here, and then down here to here and then turning that right side out. All right, so we got one of these done. So we're gonna do a few more of these and then we'll trim down the edges a little bit and then we'll head over to the sewing machine. Uh, but yeah, last week m the project I was working on was really uh, time consuming. So this one shouldn't be, hopefully, this one is a lot faster and a lot more, a little more like instant gratification if you get my drift. All right, we got seven viewers total on Twitch and, okay, six. All right, so we've got, wow, we have three viewers on Twitch and three on YouTube. That's exciting, very cool. All right, so we're gonna. Do a few of these guys, all right, I'm just marking. And the reason I'm marking this opening is just so I know, I know where it is and I don't like forget about it. So it's more of a visual reminder and I don't need a very large opening to turn because this fabric is so lightweight and the project's not, you know, super bulky. So this should be okay, I think. Just use my glue here. Hopefully we can get some good progress done today. That'd be cool, right? All right, so let's... Okay. <clears throat> Mm 
Okay. I realized for when I was editing, for cutting down the live stream, I say, um, I say okay and all right and let's, here we go, like way too much. So I need to try to be mindful of that. I'm like, wow, why do I keep saying, why do I keep saying that over and over and over again? I was like, it was driving me, it was kind of driving me crazy. So I was like, okay. All right. Let me get a few more of these done. I am going to be making this in other fabrics, uh, but the reason I'm doing just this color today is because it's kind of a pain in the butt to switch thread on my Juki. So I'm gonna be making a bunch with this color and then I'll be changing thread colors and switching this. But it's, it's a lot more efficient to make a bunch of one color at a time. And against my better judgment, I ordered a bunch more rayon to make more of these. So I really hope these sell in the Etsy shop because I ordered, I ordered a lot more. Uh, I ordered a bunch of really cute rif rifle paper co rayon that I, I mean, I can definitely use it for other projects. I might make like some scrunchies and stuff too. So maybe in a future live stream, we'll do some scrunchies. I think that would be fun. But I ordered, uh, yeah, I ordered like a lot of rayon. Um, so I really hope these sell okay. I mean, that's the thing. These are fun and they're like quick to make. So that's sort of the cool thing about it. Um, and I am planning on cutting down a more concise tutorial for the Sewing Report main channel. So if you don't want to watch a whole live stream, you will be able to do that. Hopefully, I'm hoping to upload that on Saturday, I think. And then we'll do another live stream on Sunday and I think I might take next Sunday off because it's Easter Sunday. And I figure, you know, one, I probably have some plans. I'll probably be doing something with my mom and my husband. Uh, all right. And then also I figure a bunch of you guys will probably be busy with other stuff too. So, okay. And then I'll be intermittently taking some time to read the chat. So I am seeing your comments come in. But one feedback I've gotten from people is that they it drives them crazy when they're watching replay live streams. And the live streamer keeps interrupting the, the live stream to read comments. Uh, so I will be like doing those in chunks and not just reading comments as they come in. Uh, because I, I am very mindful of the fact that not everyone is watching this live. So I totally, I totally get that. All right, here we go. All right, we got five viewers total on YouTube and Twitch. And it's 221. All right, at some point, yeah, I probably need to... I had two cups of coffee, so that's why I'm like, whoa! And then... I have some water, so hopefully I might have to like take a bathroom break at some point. I'll mute my microphone so you won't be able to like hear my bathroom activities. Um, and then, so at some point we'll probably take like a 10 minute break or something like that. So we will see. All right, yeah, lots of like loose threads and stuff. We're just gonna do this. Hopefully I can get a few done today. Alright, we got two of these done and ready to sew. Yeah, my you know, I do feel like the iron I do feel like the iron is really fading this mark. So I might have to redo it after I glue base. Alright, we got two. Maybe we'll do five of the blunt ends. So we'll do that. Alright, so we got two of these. Yeah, I have quite a few more of fabric fabric cuts and what I did to cut the fabric is I cut um this fabric like so if the salvage is here and here this fabric runs like this so I cut um what did I do or no it cuts oh yeah it runs like this okay so I cut so if the so the salvage is like here and here so I cut 37 inches off the bolt 
and then I subcut five inch strips from that. Uh, and it really depends on how, if your fabric isn't directional, you could do it how, you know, whichever way is most efficient. But if it's a directional print like this, it would look really weird if I cut it the other way. So I really had to cut it this way so that these, I think these are like tulips or something. I like this print because it's a little more like abstract, but I wanted the tulips or whatever these were to run up and down. So that's sort of what I ended up doing. All right, let's find the center point here. And this iron is linked in the description box. This is the Panasonic cordless 360 iron. It's not necessarily my favorite iron and it's pretty expensive, but I'm using it because it's cordless and I thought that would look better on stream. So that's why I chose, I'm choosing to use this one, but it's not necessarily my like favorite iron or anything like that. I actually like my iron from Aldi's that cost $12.99. Works really well. I just thought the cord would get in the way too much. So I decided to use uh, this one for the live streams because I think it just looks better. And it's a little easier because I don't have to worry about the cord getting in the way and stuff. Okay. So finding the center point here. Okay, let's get the glue back out. This is a pretty easy and quick project. You can make a few of these in an afternoon like we're doing really right now. Uh, this would make great gifts. You can also use these. I saw these used as uh, neck scarves too, really cute. You can use these as hair ties, uh, again, handbag accessories. So you could actually use this as like a pet bandana, just make sure they don't choke on it or anything. But I saw somebody tie it around their neck twice and then knot it. It looked super chic, like it looked very like 1960s. So that was actually a really cool um, inspo photo. So when I stage photos for Etsy, I might take some photos like that because I thought that looked really cool. So again, to get, just to give people ideas on how else they can use these, I also bought an Easter basket. So I did end up buying a basket and you could definitely tie, so if you're doing Easter baskets, you could make a few of these and embellish your basket with it. And also the recipient gets this as a gift. So, so these actually have a lot of different uses you could use them for, which is cool. I also might not talk the entire time. I can already tell my voice is getting sort of uh, So we may have some like ASMR time here. But if you have any questions about this project or about the channel in general or anything, uh, leave it in the chat or in the comments and I will try to answer them. <clears throat> yeah, and I apologize, this fabric is out of print. Uh, I got it. I got a, I got it on sale. I, I buy fabric directly from Cloud9 and they were having some sort of sale on this print and I thought it was really cute. So I figured I could use it for something and it looks really cute as a purse scarf. Ah, there goes my iron.
Sorry, I'm a little bit, I've been so congested this week. My allergies are going insane. My eyes are really itchy today. So that's been fun, right? Let me know in the chat or in the comments, what are you working on this week? Any fun projects? Any cool things? Did you finish anything this week? Or are you like working on a bunch of unfinished objects? Let me know. I'm hoping to get a bunch of these. So I'm hoping to get these listed in the Etsy shop. Um, you know, hopefully by like early next week. I need to, f that's the thing. Once I make everything, I need to photograph everything. I need to come up with listing descriptions uh, so there is a lot of work with listing stuff on etsy i gotta like weigh everything for shipping uh, so it's actually quite the ordeal even just to get something listed uh, i take nice photographs of everything so i gotta do all that and i'm going to try to offer both uh, styles the blunt end and the angled end um, offer it in both styles and w i think whichever like i'll keep having both but I think there's going to be one that sells better than the other. Uh, judging from comments the other day, I think it's going to be the angled one. But I personally really like the blunt ends. I just really think these are cute. Like, I just like the style. I like the, I like the straight ends. I don't know. Just personal preference, though, obviously. Make a few of these. All right. And I do plan on going live most of the day today. So if you want to pop in and pop out, you are more than welcome to. I know everyone's got stuff going on. But yeah, if you want to have this just of the in the background of whatever you're doing, that's cool. Totally cool. 
All right, this one already pretty much has the center point done. All right, so how many of these do I have? So I've got one, two, three, four. So this is gonna be five. I'll do like six of these, I guess, and then I'll make some more of the angled ones. Um, but I should have a pretty good number to list. I'm not gonna, and that's the thing. I think when you're listing something on Etsy and it's, especially if it's handmade and you don't really know if it's gonna sell, I would not make a ton of them, make like a few of them. And then if they sell, they sell. Uh, but you don't wanna be stuck with a bunch of things that are already made that you can't sell. Although I guess I could give them as gifts and stuff too. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Okay. Uh, but I am going to be making these in different fabrics. We'll do that next week. I also have a gift I want to make um, for somebody. So we might do some embroidery machine stuff also maybe next week. So I think I'll go live uh, twice next week during the week and then take Sunday off for Easter Sunday. So I think that's the plan right now. But I really need to get that video edited for the main channel uh, on making these scarves. And then I need to get these listed. I, I really need to get my budding gear, photograph all the scarves, get them listed, you know, and try to do that. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, yeah, I feel like this is kind of overwhelming. And by the way, I appreciate everyone that's ordered from the Etsy shop. I, I've noticed quite a few people watching the live streams have. Uh, so I greatly appreciate that. You have no idea how much I really do want to thank everyone especially since this channel, I'm putting a lot of time into it and I'm not getting any YouTube ad money. Although YouTube is absolutely running ads on my live streams, uh, they just don't pay you for it unless you're monetized. So I've got a ways to go before getting monetized here. And I'm, I might try to become like a, I think it's called like a Twitch affiliate. So you, I don't think there's a lot of money on Twitch unless you're huge. Um, Rumble, I've made like 20 cents, so that's not really, you know, I'm there because I'm, I'm giving it a try, you know, and there does seem to be a significant number of people using it, so I'm like, okay, but, um, yeah, the money, there's really no money there at this point, so we'll see how this goes, uh, but I figured I might as well just try to be, you know, if I'm doing a live stream one place, I might as well try to do it on as many platforms as I can just to get the most mileage out of this uh, type of content production, right? Got to work smarter, right? Okay. So we'll see how this goes. I don't know. You know, I've wanted to do this type of live streaming for a while. And here we are. So we'll do one more after this. So we'll do like six of these and then we'll do some more angled ones. Yeah, I've got a few. Yeah, I've got a, quite a few of these left. So I could make I could make a bunch of these actually. And I think this fabric is um, f like 50. This, this is definitely wider than quilting cotton for sure. See if there's any comments I'm missing. I don't think so. I do appreciate the Twitch spammer. Thank you for that. Okay. But we'll be here all day. Just chilling and sewing. Having fun. There we go. Oh, 
we'll do one more of these. Then we'll do some, we'll do the, we'll finish these, and then we'll do some more angled ones. Just to kind of mix things up and not have everything be uh, too repetitive. So I'm gonna make like five or six at a time. Okay. Got my trusty, you can't have too many lint rollers in your sewing room. I need to get, uh, let's rip one of these sheets off here. There we go. All right, one more. All right, and there's a fiber, a little fiber I missed. By the way, if you can't tell from my background, uh, yes, I am a big BTS fan. Uh, on BTS Army, you can see I've got some, a photo of the group. I've got my, oh, you can't see this. I've got an Army light stick. I've got my uh, Bangtan bomb. I've got some BTS coffee over here. Uh, so if you are wondering, yes, I'm BTS Army all the way, all the way. All right, let's get back to picture in picture. Yeah, I've got a few. Yeah, I definitely have a few more left. Uh, so this is all the fabric I cut already. I just, and again, I was just trying to get, make it easier for me to, you know, make these. So I cut all my raw pieces ahead of time. My hair is all over. This is what happens when I keep my hair down. It's just kind of, it's all over the place. I did even hairspray it today. That didn't seem to help very much, so I don't know. Did not help much at all. Got my marks here. All right, so yeah, we'll stream this this Sunday, and then we'll, we're going to be skipping next Sunday for Easter. Yeah, I keep forgetting. I thought Easter was later this year, but it's like April 9th or something. So that's coming up pretty soon. See how many we can make today. If I can make like 10 of these, that would be pretty, at least 10, that would be cool. I don't know if I can. We'll see. Gotta get these photographed. And that's the thing, I have to like stage all the photos, do all the listing stuff. It's, it's honestly, you know, that's why I'm trying to, you know, I wanna sell a lot, like make a lot of these so that the listing is, the listing becomes more worth it when you have to do the marketing if you're selling a decent number of the item. So if you only have one, like if you make one of a kind stuff, you have to do all of that work for every item. Uh, but if I'm, you know, selling like 30 of these, then at least that listing info is good for 30 times. 
So the marketing, you know, so the marketing is stretched a little further for all this stuff. So I'll take some photos. Then I could also use the photos and video for social media. So there's a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of ways you can repurpose the content you're producing for marketing purposes too. And these will be, I got some feedback the other day and I decided to sell these for $19 each. I also have some Liberty of London fabric that's really pretty that if these sell okay, I'll think about using the, that fabric. I would have to charge a little bit more for those scarves just because that fabric was way more expensive. So we'll see how this goes. We'll see if these sell. I'll report back for sure. All right, so now we have to cut all of these ends. So I'm just, you see how this fabric is like not super even? I'm just going to trim this so it's even on all of these. All right, so time to get out my rotary cutter. Actually, first the lint roller. We need to lint roll quite a bit here. Get my trusty glue bottle out of the way. All right, so I'm going to move my pressing board a little. This actually, I need to get all of the pieces. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit, and then we'll trim all of these ends. All right, let's move this out of the way a little bit here. Hopefully it doesn't knock over the camera. And I got my, this is just a square Creative Grids ruler uh, that I'll be using, and my now discontinued but favorite Ginger rotary cutter. I'm really sad that they discontinued this. And I'm basically just going to chop off. I'm going to use this uh, top fold here as a guide and I'm just going to trim off all of the ends here. We'll just trim this pretty close to the, there we go, yeah, pretty close to the, the edge here. And I'm just trying to get a neater neater edge here and then I'll be glue basting this close too but after I trim everything so see how ni nice and like nice and clean that edge is I got rid of all like the little fuzzies and stuff so now I just have to do this for all of the pieces And after I do this, I'll see how long my piece is. But all of my finished uh, scarves are going to be about 36 inches long because I cut the fabric a little over 37 inches. All right. Oh, wait. Actually, this is like really, okay, this is like, this is like 30, okay, that's crazy. This is like 38 inches. So this is going to be a little bit longer. Okay. Well, it'll be all right. All right, here we go. And yeah, lots of fuzzies. You can also use your lint roller to get things off of your cutting mat. I do that a lot. And it really helps get stuff off of your cutting mat. See? All right, so let's trim all of these. One more step here. Okay. And like the pouches I made last week, I'm going to be calculating about how long each scarf takes me to make. And then I've actually been including that information in the listing. Uh, so e the, the set of petal pouches I made last week, each one took me about five hours on average. And I chose to include that in the listing info so people could kind of know, especially folks who don't make things, Nobody, people don't know how long things take. So I really wanted to try to get the point across that, hey, this takes time and that's why they're priced in a certain way. You're welcome to steal that if you uh, sell things as well online or at craft fairs. 
just tell people, hey, this took five, like, so if this took five hours to make, they're priced at $45, and, you know, um, you know, I took five hours, that's, before materials even come out, that's $9 an hour, which isn't even that much. So I think that kind of might help people get perspective on handmade pricing. Okay, let's chop this guy off. Because that's the thing, you can go to Target and get zipper pouches for $5. You, you know, again, you don't know the circumstances under which those products are made. You don't know the person who made them. And I do think a lot of people in Etsy in particular are looking to support uh, small businesses like this one that make things by hand in a studio with, you know, obviously I know my own working conditions here because I'm the, I'm the owner of this business. Uh, so I do think that there are, there, there is a certain sub, subset of the population that is willing to support those prices, I think. We'll see, we'll see. All right, so we got three of these done. All right, we've got a few more to go here. Lots of fuzzies, oh, lots of fuzzies here. So y'all have to calculate, I can basically use this live stream length and, you know, figure out, we'll figure out how many scarves I make today and then I'll be able to tell on average, because I'm doing batch sewing, you know, it's a little convoluted, but I generally should be able to get a good idea of how long each one took me based on how many I make in a certain period of time and then divide that by the hour. So we'll see how that goes. We will see how that goes. All right, I already trimmed. Okay, this one's done. All right, we'll be able to get to the sewing machine pretty soon too. So I've got a few, all right, I've got two more of these and then we will sew. And we're just trimming these. And because you can see how this is not really even here and I'm just trying to even up the, the ends here so that they're, so that they're uh, even here. So that's really why I'm doing this particular thing. Okay, um, let's see here, we'll do this. Yay! <clears throat> okay. All right, one more to go, and then we will be, uh, oh yeah, we have to close, we have to baste. So you can see you, there's like a little opening here. I'm gonna basically ba glue baste this close too, uh, just so that that stays in place as well. I don't know if I need to do that, but I'm, I'm doing it, so we'll see. Okay, see this one's pretty, see I definitely need to trim this one for sure. We got any, do we have any Twitch viewers? All right, we have no Twitch viewers right now. We had a couple Twitch viewers. People are probably like, what is this old lady doing on Twitch? She's not gaming, what, what the hell? I don't know, we'll see. All right, this needs to be trimmed as well. Maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm too old for Twitch. <laughs> what do you think? Is this like a bad idea? I don't know. 
I mean, possi possibly, who knows. Let's put this away. I'll put this aside too for now. I really like this Ikea SCOTUS. By the way, I do have a video on uh, installing the Ikea SCOTUS. My husband did it. I watched. But I did a video about him doing it. So if you are interested in this particular organizational system, I do like it. Plus, it makes a good backdrop for videos. Uh, but we did do a video a while ago on the main Sonar Park channel about how to install the SCOTUS. I love the accessories for it, especially these little, I think these are like magazine or like paper racks, uh, but I put two next to each other and they're really good for holding rollers. So that's my opinion. All right, let's base this shut here. All right, this is, this is just a DIY pressing board I made out of uh, pre-cut lumber and some quilt batting and uh, just this is a can this is just a canvas cover I made for it so this is also very cheap but I do like having a nice uh, large pressing surface it makes it really easy for me let's glue base this closed I need to put my iron back on too the iron kind of shuts off after a while so you have to kind of turn it back on every once in a while all right and this is going to be real quick I'm just putting a little dab of glue here and literally just closing that shut. So this will be pretty quick. And then we'll go over to the sewing machine and we'll get really get we'll really get cooking there. All right, one. There we go. All right, so we got this one done. So this is going pretty quick. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I could, so if I just, yeah, this is good. All right, way to be more efficient. So if I just put these next to each other, so I've got it like this, I can just sort of do both at once. Okay, good idea. Good idea, Jen. I was like, hey, this will make things easier, right? This is cool. All right, so yeah, all you got to do is, uh, yeah, you can do both now. All right, cool. All right, well, this is a good way to make it kind of faster. Just put these next to each other. I definitely need the lint roller again. And if you are watching this on the replay, I have live chat replay enabled. So if you'd like to see everyone's live chats and you're watching this later, you can do that as well even if I'm not putting them up on the screen. Okay, so we're just gonna get some glue in here. Yeah, this is actually a little bit faster. I mean, not not like tons faster, but it's a little bit faster. There we go, just sort of put this, I just put these, there we go, see? Do both at once, cool. A little bit faster here and then we'll get sewing. I'm going to see if I can, if I can finish all of these today, then next, you know, maybe in the, over the next days, couple days, I'll do another color. So I, I have a lot of, uh, I have quite a bit of rayon. So I've got some pretty rayons to use. So maybe we'll do that. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I spent a little too much money yesterday on r buying more rayon. Uh, I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself. What if these just don't sell and then I've got uh, a lot of rayon? So I need to try to actually sell these we'll see should probably see if these sell first but you know I mean I could use rayon for I could use rayon I could make hair ties I could make some really cute scrunchies so there's other stuff I could do with the rayon even if I don't make purse scarves I think rayon is just a really nice fabric to have on hand for like stuff like this for like personal accessories and whatnot so we'll see Okay. Just putting a little glue here.
All right, guys, I think we're ready to head to the sewing machine for the first time today. So I have six scarves ready to be sewn. So we're going to be doing that next. Wow, my, there is a crazy amount of like random loose threads here, loose fibers. Okay, let's try to get this up. Okay, let's head over to the sewing machine and we will get cracking with all that. All right, guys, all right. Also, real quick, I'm gonna check to see who was at the door. If they left a package, cool. All right, so let me put this over by the sewing machine. All right, guys, I'm just gonna check the door real quick. See if anybody left anything. Usually we have a lot of weird, we have a lot of strange solicitors coming around trying to sell you like solar panels or something. Okay, yeah, it was nobody important. Probably, we just, this is like a no solicitation neighborhood, but people do it anyways, so that's always fun. All right, so I'm sewing on the Juki DDL8700. This is an industrial sewing machine. Love it. I'm gonna be using a 2.75 stitch length and about a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so let me get these finished, guys. I'm also gonna do a quick, um, we're gonna do a scrap leader here. So I've got a little piece here. We'll do that first, just to get this seam started. I do find this kind of helps. Okay, so, and we can call it a kind of daisy chain as well. All right, so, Okay, so here are my marks, and I'm going to be sewing from the first mark down, and then pivoting and down the short side, and then I'll be doing the other side. But this, these marks here, this will be my opening for turning the project right side out, so I'm not going to sew that section. You do need to backstitch pretty good at both ends, so don't forget to do that. Otherwise your stitches uh, can pop out and that wouldn't be very fun. All right, so let's do a quarter inch. Oh wait, the needle is sort of down. Okay, that's probably not great. Okay, here we go. It's about a quarter inch seam allowance here. Okay, where is my seam allowance? Here we go. So just a few stitches forward and having that little scrap leader will just help uh, not have any, you won't get like that rat's nest of thread underneath your project. So that will help. And then I'll be doing, let's see here. Oh, what's, all right, something's, uh, what's going on here? Do we have thread stuck? All right, something's going on. Did something happen with my bobbin thread? I don't know what's going on. Oh, here we go. Oh, it just got stuck. Okay, but it seems to be, all right. Yeah, we just had some thread. Here we go. Just some thread stuck. Let me just trim this guy. Well, in theory, that was supposed to work. But yeah, see, I've got all of these threads coming out here. Let me just trim this guy off here. Let's see how the underside of this looks. All right, yeah, just one, a few threads. Here we go. Lots of stuff here. All right, so I'm just gonna keep sewing. And I'm using my fingers to sort of guide the fabric and you can go a little bit faster that way. The good thing is this project is really nice because it's fairly forgiving. It's quick, there's no extra material you need besides fabric and thread. You don't need interfacing, you don't need hardware, you don't need zippers. Uh, so materials wise, this project is very simple and that's why I, th I thought this would be a good thing to sell because it is not a super difficult project or complicated project. And when you look at what high-end designers are charging for their version, you charging 20 bucks for it won't seem that bad. That's my opinion. All right, so we're at the corner. I've got my needle down and I'm just pivoting and then I'm gonna sew. All right, let me make sure all my stitches. See, these stitches look nice here, I think. Stitches look good, pivoted, and then I'm gonna keep sewing down the short edge, and then I will do a little bit of back stitching 
here just to make sure these stitches don't like pop out and stuff. All right, here we go. All right, and then with this still attached here, I'm gonna start another one just so that I don't have, I don't have to, you know, I, I'll trim the threads, but I'll just go from one piece to the next piece. All right, so we're, st we're gonna start here. And this should help a little bit. Also, day this, so this is kind of daisy chaining. This also helps you do a little faster. It's a little more efficient for batch sewing too, but yeah, don't forget to backstitch at both start and stopping points because you don't want your threads to pop. I love this. I really, I didn't think I would like this sewing machine this much, but I really am enjoying sewing on this Juki. Not sponsored or anything. I do have some affiliate links in the description box, but I purchased this machine. I like it. I, I feel like it's a very reasonable priced machine for what you get. So I'm a, I'm a fan. I haven't had to get it repaired yet. You do have to put oil in it, which but yeah, I do need to kind of, I think I need to re-oil it at some point soon. And this has like an oil pan underneath for the oil. All right, so you see these are attached, so I'm gonna trim these threads now. You see it made a little, definitely made it a little easier here. All right, so we'll just put this guy off to the side for a second. And so we'll do, yeah, we'll just kind of do them as I go. All right, doing this corner here. Do a couple more stitches. Back stitching. All right, and then we're just gonna put another one right underneath. Hopefully I don't run into the bobbin issues I had the other day, but so far, so good. Yeah, I'm curious to see how many of these I can get done in this, like today. Hopefully I can get these, more of these photographed and listed and stuff. I did take some, um, I did take some photos with a purse. So I need some photos just of the scarves alone. And then I need some photos of maybe some other stuff. I did, and I did buy an Easter basket to stage it with, and that looked pretty cute. But I need to do photos of each, um, the angled scarves and the blunt scarves. I need to take more photos of that. So we'll do that. Okay, you know what I feel? I need to kind of go back a little bit. You see how I've sort of gotten off the, the path a little bit? All right, we gotta kind of, we sort of gotta, yeah, I kind of wandered off. We're just gonna redo this part, which will be fine. But you see, I kind of, this is a little too skinny for my taste. So we're just gonna go back and redo this particular section. Yeah, that looks, that definitely looks a little bit better. See, if you veer off a little bit, you can just go over those stitches. You can also rip stitches out if you go too far in. So that's the nice thing about sewing is that in a lot of situations, you can rip out your seams or do whatever and kind of redo sections if you, if you don't like it. So if you don't think it turned out well, we go, we'll just trim these threads. Yeah, that definitely looks way better now. All right, let me trim this thread here. So we'll do one side and then we'll do the other side of each piece. But you see, this isn't, really isn't taking super long. So that is a good thing. All right, all right, go. All right, next piece, next up. And I keep all of my little threads in a solo party cup because this is a party, right? This is a party. All right, this is this one. All right, this one has one side as well, okay. 
Where are we going here? All right. All right, here's my mark. From this. One more. All right, pivot. Trim this guy. Got a couple loose threads here. Alright, so now I'm going to do the other side of all the pieces. So I got one done on each one. Alright, so now we got to do the other side. Alright, so I got to start around here. Okay. Trim. This is this is bothering me. I need to trim all this off. All right, this is all this extra stuff. It's driving me crazy. Alright. 
Let's get another guy. So this piece is totally done. Just got to finish the rest here. All right, am I gonna have Bob in troubles again? We'll see. Uh-oh. 
I had bobbin troubles the other day. Okay, here we go. I think I'm all right. All right, got it. And that's good, because I only got one more piece left, so it would have kind of been bad if uh, I ran into bobbin issues on the very last piece. So hopefully this is okay. We're gonna keep an eye on this piece, though, just to make sure nothing, no funny business goes on here. Uh-oh, should check the underside. All right, I think that still looks okay, hopefully. I'm keeping an eye on you here. No weirdness here. All right, let's see. All right. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, I think we're running into some problems here. Yeah, this is not... Something's weird with the bobbin. Of course this happened. Yep, all right, we gotta cut this. We're, yeah, the top thread is fine, see? Something's funky with the bobbin thread yet again. We're gonna have to rip this out. Oh boy. All right, let me cut this. Yeah. Yeah, this does not look, this does not look good. This happened the other day. Sometimes the bobbin is just slipping out of the tension thing on the bottom so we're gonna need to yeah something's going on here this kind of stinks though too because we were on like the very this is literally the last piece all right so we're gonna have to take the bobbin case out here I'm getting to the point where I can do it without even like all right oh okay and the thread just fell out ah what just happened to the thread here all right we're gonna have to move all right this is terrible all right Hold on a second. I need to get out of my chair and find the thread. Where did the thread go? All right, I think it's over here. All right, I found the thread. All right, oh, there goes the case too. I might also need, you know what, yeah. No, I still have a lot of bobbin thread left. I thought maybe the, uh, you know what, it got tangled sort of, it got wound sort of weird. So I think that's what happened here. Something's going on with this. All right, let's redo this. You know what, we were, we were on a pretty good run, Bobbin. What is, what's up with this? What is up with this? All right, let's rewind the Bobbin a little bit. All right, and let's put it back in the case. Yeah, I still have a lot of Bob, like I should be okay with the Bobbin thread. So you need to put it in like the letter P here. Okay, so put it in like this. And then there's a little slot on the side of the bobbin case and then a little tension thing. And it keeps, for some reason, sometimes it keeps slipping out of this little tension guide here. Okay, so it should be okay now. I'm, you know what, on the upside, I'm getting better at knowing my bobbin area and stuff and I'm getting better at doing it quicker. So maybe that's a silver lining in this whole situation, I don't know. All right, so let's put it in and I can sort of put in the case now without even like really looking at it. There we go, here it a snap. So I guess maybe that's a good thing, I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna pull the bobbin thread up. Let's see here, okay, here we go. All right, so let's try to do this last, uh, last stitch. Literally one more to go, really? Really? Come on. Come on now. But of course, it's me. This is gonna happen. Also, I hope my bunny's not, I feel, I'm gonna have to check on the rabbit to make sure she's not doing anything super crazy. I hear her crashing into something. I don't know what's going on. All right, this should be okay. Let me just check. So I'm gonna check the underside. Okay, yeah, this stitching looks fine actually really good this this machine produces really nice stitches I just I I thought the industrial might be a little like you know I don't know unwieldy or whatever to sew on but it's really not it's really a good comfortable experience for me and I do have some videos about this Juki DDL 8700 if you if this is something you are ah all right I'm going off the 
going off the rails again a little bit. I need to go back a little bit. But if you are considering a machine like this, it is a really nice, like it's a really nice machine. All right. Make sure my stitching is okay. Let's see here. Yeah, stitching looks fine. Okay, hopefully we can get through this one last, uh, last thing. There we go. So, yeah, see, it's sort of, this fabric is sort of going off the rails here, but it's all right. And by the way, I cannot see the chat right now, so I have no idea. I honestly don't know what anyone's saying, because uh, I do not have it over at the sewing machine table. So I'm just talking, and I don't know. I honestly don't know what's going on. All right, let's see. backstitch. All right. All right, hopefully this is, okay, cool. All right, sweet. All right, so we got all of our pieces uh, sewn. Uh, so let's go back, we'll trim, and then we're gonna turn everything right side out. Also, I'm gonna try to find an awl. All right, hold on a second. I need my sewing awl because if I can get to it. It's in this little drawer and I have a bunch of other stuff in here. But I'd like to be able to get it, get to it because I think it would help me turn this project right side out. I don't know if this is gonna, I don't know if this is gonna happen though. All right, I might need to like turn this. All right, I'm gonna have to move the camera just a little bit. Okay, just to get this. Hold on, guys. All right, let me make sure my let me make sure my focus is still good. Hold on, hold on one second. Okay, hold on, guys. Sorry. All right, I think it's still good. All right, cool. All right, let's go back. I needed to get this out of the drawer because I'm going to be using, yeah, I'm going to be using this to poke out some of the corners. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I don't know. All right, let's head back to the sewing table. All right, the rabbit is not doing anything. All right, she's being good. She is being pretty good. All right. And here we are, we've got our projects. So, I mean, we're, we're actually making pretty good headway on these scarves. Like this is actually pretty good. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, well, remove some of these loose threads here. All right, but I would like to, hold on, I'm checking the, all right. Checking the Rumble chat. We actually have nine viewers on Rumble, so shout out to everyone watching on Rumble. Thank you. Welcome if this is your first time here. I'm Jen with the Sewing Report, and we are live from the sewing room. Uh, so I'm going to take my opening. This is what we didn't sew here. And to make things easier for closing up this opening later, I'm going to press, sort of kind of pre-press this It'll make, it'll just make it easier for you to close it up later. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean when we get there. So I'm just going to do this for every piece. And I'm going to trim. I'm going to trim the corners uh, to eliminate some of the bulk. All right, so we'll do this on each piece. Then we'll trim these. Oh my gosh, so much, all right, so many threads here. So many threads. And I'm going to try to use this all tip to like poke out, the, help me poke out the corners. It's less pointy than I remembered, so it might not be that help, much help. I don't know. We'll see. All right. You know, Sarah, I really like my solo cup. Like it makes me feel like I'm at like a frat party or something, you know? So I'm a, I'm a fan of the solo cup. I'm probably not going to get rid of it. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie probably going to keep it. Right, we'll do this on all of the pieces first. Yeah, I'm going to need to lint roll like crazy again. All right, we got four viewers on Twitch and YouTube. Shout out to you guys. All right, yeah, we're going to need to... Ah, all right, kind of pre-press this. Yeah, the one the one downside with the rayon is it it is fraying quite a bit. So 
just something you need to know. You can kind of, you can see it. And I don't recommend quilting cotton for this project because I, I personally just think it's uh, one, not drapey enough. Uh, so you're not really gonna get the look you want with it. And two, I think it's too wrink, like I just think it's too heavy and wrinkly. So you, it's gonna like, it's gonna wrinkle so easily that it's not gonna look very good. So quilting cotton is not a fabric I would recommend for making scarves. Again, quilting cotton is great for a lot of other things. It, it can also be a bit tricky for clothing too, just because again, it wrinkles. It just wrinkles so easily in my opinion that it's just, it's one of those things where I see people on like Instagram and stuff making clothes out of quilting cotton. And it looks good in the photos, but I don't think it would look good in like everyday practicality. I think if you just wore it around, I actually did make a dress out of quilting cot qu cotton and I've made some skirts out of quilting, co qu quilting cotton. They look, again, they look nice when they're freshly pressed, but if you go around in the garment all day, over time it just doesn't, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't, they don't wash very well either and you have to keep pressing it. Uh, so quilting cotton is not my favorite fabric for clothes. Use a fabric that's meant for clothes. Again, rayon I think is a better choice. But quilting cotton is just not my jam in general for, um, for adult clothing. Maybe a little more for like, I think it could work better for baby clothing maybe. Uh, you know, and it also depends on the brand. I find some brands of quilting cotton, quilting cotton are a bit better for clothing and some brands are not great. So I think it depends. I think it really depends. I mean, I, you can make use quilting cotton for things like aprons, like home stuff, uh, you know, quilted pillow covers, stuff like that. Especially if it's something that you can press easily, that might not be too bad. Uh, but again, I wouldn't use quilting cotton to make like a, like a blouse or anything just because, again, I just find it wrinkles very easily. And I also find it a little annoying that a lot of uh, quilting cotton designers, like fabric designers, they'll use quilting cotton prints in samples and they'll make clothing. And again, it's one of those things where it only looks nice in the photos or on display. That particular fabric won't actually look great if you're wearing, wearing it like a normal person would. That's just, just my opinion. All right, so let's trim these corners. Now let me get my scissors. And these are my new Kai serrated scissors linked in the description box. These are really nice scissors. All right, so I'm going to be trimming the corners down on all of these. All right. Actually, I'm gonna get my, you know what? I'm gonna get my thread catcher cup. All right, hold on a second, I'll be right back. I'm gonna actually get my cup and then I will clip all the corners into the cup. Hopefully that'll eliminate mess. All right, the rabbit's looking at me like she's plotting something. I don't know what's going on in this house, guys. No idea. All right, so let's, actually, you know, I can bring the, now I can bring the pressing board back if I'm using the cup, okay. So let's bring the pressing board back here. Ah. So I'm gonna use the cup and I'm gonna trim all of my corners into here. Uh, so you wanna trim close to the stitching, obviously not into the stitching cause that would be uh, quite bad. Uh, you don't want the stitches to pop. So notice I'm not, I'm, I'm getting like close to the stitches but I'm not, obviously not clipping into them. You do not wanna do that. So do this for all of the corners here. Okay. And this should give you some nice corners. Let's do this for all. Oh wait, this area, oh. Oh man, I've got one. All right guys, I gotta go back to the sewing machine. I like, there's one whole piece that I just didn't sew at all. All right, let's go back to the sewing machine. I, actually, you know, we'll finish clipping these and then I'll go back. Yeah, there's a piece that I, somehow I just totally missed and I didn't sew it at all, so. We're gonna have to obviously do that. All right, let's clip these corners first and then we'll go, we'll go do that. I don't know how I missed that one, that's weird. But hey, sometimes it happens. Life in the sewing room. 
All right, we'll clip these guys. And we are making six blunt end purse scarves right now. So we're working on that. We're going to do that and then we'll work on some more angled end scarves. Hopefully I can finish these soon. I mean, we're only about an hour and a half in and we're, I'm a good way into this project. So I should be able to make, I should be able to make at least 10 today. I think, I think we'll, we'll see. All right. Yeah, I definitely forgot to sew one of them though. So that's, that's kind of a fail on my part. That's fine. We're just going to trim these guys down. Yeah, I don't know how I missed that one. That was kind of silly. I'm trimming this corner too. All right, and then we got to, now the, then the fun part, turning everything right side out, which is, you know, no, it shouldn't be too bad. Again, it's, it's definitely time consuming. Everything, that's the thing, slowing, sewing is, for me at least, not super fast. I know there are people that sew, fast. I don't like sewing fast. I feel like I make mistakes and I don't feel like my projects come out that great if I'm rushing. So again, could I make these faster? Probably. Do I want to? Not really. All right. Yeah, we got to finish that one section because I totally didn't sew that at all. So that's great. Great, Jen. Good job, Jen. All right. All right, let's go back to the sewing machine one more time and uh, finish this piece that I did not, apparently did not sew at all. I don't know how that, I have no idea how that happened because I thought I got everything, but apparently not. And I'm gonna take the thread cup too. All right, we got one more to go here. Yeah, the rabbit, she's like, I don't know what, she, she's crazy. She's just sort of, she kind of sits in this one spot and then just stares at everything. I don't know, it's very strange. She's, she's kind of a weirdo. I don't know what's going on with her. All right, so, and you know what the funny thing is I even like pressed this section too. All right, so we're doing two. All right, and I'm gonna hold, just hold these thread ends. It kind of just helps with uh, not getting things tangled up, so. All right, let's keep sewing, hopefully. If I have bobbin issues on this like one last part, I'm gonna be a little, I'm gonna be a little sad. I'm not gonna lie. Gonna be a little sad. Let's get this little guy here. And if anybody has any questions about what I'm doing or about the channel or pretty much anything, let me know in the chat or in the comments. I'm just here, you know, we're just here to hang out and have fun today. It's Thursday. You know, we're getting to the end of the week here. What was it was, you know, I'll be, I'll be working all weekend. I mean, I work pretty much every weekend for the most part. So not nothing different here. Hopefully you guys are doing something fun this weekend or maybe working on a project or you know, something, I don't know, working on a hobby, watching Netflix, who knows, you know, what do, what do we, what are we doing here anyways? I don't even know. All right, I need one more, oh, one more stitch here. All right, I can't believe I just like didn't sew this one at all. This is silly, this is very silly. All right, got a little back stitch in. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing the other side. The good thing about this being long is that it's, you can really, you can really do that. So, okay, so, um, all right, we are going to do this. All right, all right, here we go. Let's see where this glue ends, about right here, okay. At least, hey, we got more, one more round at the sewing machine, though, for all you viewers out there. All right. 
All right, ah, need to. I'm gonna trim this thread here. One more, one more stitch. Yeah, like I will kind of slow down towards the end and then check to make sure. All right, so this is about a quarter inch here. All right, let's back stitch. All right, and then this part's done. All right, so now we're really done over here for now. That, the, the first time was a fake out. That was a fake out. All right, let's head back over and then we'll trim this guy and then we'll turn everything right side out. All right. All right, we're back. Let's just trim these threads here. Oh wait, trim the corners. That's what we're really doing. Right, trim the corners here. Oh. I love, I don't know about you, I love the way the iron smells. I know that sounds weird. I just, I just love it. I don't know. I just really, I just, I don't know. There's something about the smell of an iron. I just really enjoy it. We're going to trim this corner. And I'm not clipping into the stitches. Be very careful. Right, we're going to dump out the thread cup too. We'll, we'll get a fresh one. All right, so now we have to turn everything right side out. So we can kind of just sit here. We'll just sit, chill, and chat and everything. So, all right, so here is my little opening for turning, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just literally turning this. I also need my chopstick here. All right. This is my, like, free chopstick I got from Publix, and I'm just using it to... I use this to help me turn projects. It's wooden. All right, so we're just gonna pull out the ends of each scarf. So we're turning this right side out. So this is where the project starts to come together here. All right. By the way, if you have not yet, Make sure to like and subscribe to the Sewing Report and Sewing Report Live if you have not done that yet. If you are new, I'd really appreciate it. This channel is not monetized, so we're, we're working on getting there. But every subscribe helps, liking videos, commenting on videos, that all helps me out. So if you could do that, I would greatly appreciate it. But thank you, everyone. And I want to thank give a shout out to today's live stream sponsor, the Sewing Report Etsy shop, where you can find fabric and sewing supplies. We've got a sale going on on some of the fabric bundles. And now we have a new, uh, obviously this is what we're doing today, but we have a new section called Handmade Luxury Gifts, where I will be making things live on stream and selling them in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. So because this channel is not monetized, I'm, I'm my own sponsor, uh, so that's how it is, uh, but this is the Sewing Report Etsy shop, and that is the sponsor of today's live stream. And if you're just joining in kind of late, we are making handbag scarves. Uh, so we are finishing up a batch of the blunt end scarves. So those are the kinds with the straight across edges. And I'm turning these right side out. Okay, we've reached one end. All right, so you can kind of see how the reason I put the opening for turning in the middle is so that, you know, it's easier to, it's pretty doable to turn this whole length right side out, uh, you know, because you're only going halfway down the scarf. All right, here we go. Look at these points. These are beautiful, beautiful points. So I'm gonna gently poke out these corners and then I'll be pre like the pressing, pressing this project does take a while. All right, so I got one side done. Now I've got to do the other side. And we're doing this for all of these scarves, all of the pieces here. So we're just going to pull this out. But see, this isn't, this really isn't too bad. You know, and this is kind of like mindless. This is a mindless sewing task. So you can like, 
you could do this while you're listening to a podcast or something and you can kind of just you know take it easy this isn't super mentally taxing it's just sort of a nice this is kind of a nice easygoing sewing project if you're looking for something like that uh, some of the details on my fabric measurements are in the description box along with a link to the Etsy shop and a link to some of the stuff I'm using. This is a Cloud9 Fabrics Rayon print. That is, it's out of print, so unfortunately uh, it's not available anymore. But I have a whole bolt of this fabric that I will be using to make stuff out of. Alright, so let's get this going on. I'm just going to poke. Alright, we'll do each one. All right, so I'm just gonna poke this out here. So again, I'm being very, notice I'm not being too forceful because if you push too hard, you'll poke through the stitches and that's definitely not what you wanna do. Cause then you'll have to like try to fix it and you'll have to go back and redo some sections. So you don't really wanna do that. Okay, oh, actually there's, there's a little more ways to go here. Okay, all right, but yeah, using some sort of turning tool can help you. Oh, there's a little ways to go. Uh, in just getting this right side out. There we go. All right, now we're getting close to the uh, the ends here. Okay, so let's poke these out. Again, I'm not, really not being too forceful here. I'm just sort of being very gentle. There we go. And I'll try, let me try to use my sewing awl because that's a pretty, uh, it's still blunt, but it's like a pretty um, smaller, it's a pretty small, actually wait, no, it's not, sm okay, no, it's really not smaller. All right, so the chopstick really is the best option. Okay, so that was kind of for nothing, but that's all right. Okay, so let's keep poking out these corners. Again, I'm being very gentle here. All right. Just rolling out this seam here. these off to the side lint roll yeah look at all I need the lint roller like crazy today so the pressing of this item can be a little tricky just because uh, you have to really roll these seams out you see what I mean like so what I normally do is I kind of keep the seam in the middle first and try to kind of use an iron to gently press the seams like apart from just press the sides apart from each other and I find that helps a little bit. And then when you go to actually press the seam down, it, it in my opinion, it is easier once you do that. You see what I'm saying? Because I've already kind of rolled the seam away from itself. Here we go. Actually, yeah, this is pretty, not too bad. So you gotta do this for both sides and then close up that opening. And I'm going to use, I'm gonna do the glue basting because that helps make it easier. And then all you have to do after that is stitch up that, op stitch that opening closed and you're done with, you're literally done with these scarves. That's literally it. So this is a fairly easy going sewing project overall. So I'm gonna do the same side. The angled ones are a little bit trickier to press. Uh, the, blunt, the blunt end ones are, in my opinion, a little bit easier in that regard. All right, so let's do that. We see how pressing the seam apart from itself seems to make it a little bit easier for me to press later on. All right, here we go. Not too bad. All right, so I do need to press this end a little bit better. Okay. And then kind of, yeah, keep, use your fingers and really like roll that. See how I'm using my fingers to sort of roll the seam and manipulate it a bit. So you'll need to do that. And the good thing about this rayon is that, again, you can, you know, if you, if it gets wrinkled, you can just repress it. You use it on a scarf. Uh, it gets wrinkled because you tied it. You can just re, just take it to your ironing board and press it and it'll be, you know, good as new. All right, so now we're at the opening here. So you see how me pressing it beforehand uh, kind of made it sort of blend in here. 
So you kind of, you, you can't really tell where the opening is. So I want this opening to line up with the rest of the seam. So I'm going to sort of finger press this in a little bit here. So you really want to do that. And then you're going to glue base this shut. All right, so I'm just going to start doing this. And I can always kind of fix it too. So if, uh, if I want to change it a little bit later, I can. So you see this bottom seam, I want to press it in a little bit more. So I can do that. So again, I'm kind of I'm sort of redoing it along the way. Um, the other thing I've noticed is that it can be kind of hard to tell where, once you glue base the shot, it's going to be hard for you to tell where the opening is. So I'm going to use my marking pen and I'm actually going to mark where I need to sew a little bit beyond the stitch line. Uh, so I'm going to mark here and here just so that I know where I need to sew. So the stitches end here, so I'm going to, actually, yeah, I'm going to use the white one. So the stitches end about here, so I need to sew from about here. I'm making like a very small mark here, and then I'm going to sew to about here. So the stitches end here, so I'm going to do a couple more stitches. So now I'm going to glue baste this opening shut, and then... Um, then I'll know I need to sew from here to here. All right, I have a little glue. All right, I need like a paper towel or something. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so let's just take a little glue here and then apply some to the fabric on the inside. All right, make sure it's where I want it. And I'm going to iron, and this will stay in place until I stitch this uh, shut. So I'm basically just going to stitch this. Yeah, I'm really just going to stitch this whole whole thing closed. Um, all right, let me mark it again because the iron sort of this definitely is like a heat soluble pen. So I've noticed when I place marks on it, they tend to disappear. So I'm just going to mark this again. All right, so I just know, so now I just need to edge stitch or top stitch about an eighth of an inch in from about here to here. And then the project is done. It's all closed up. There will be a little bit of visible stitching, but again, it's really not, um, it's really going to be fairly inconspicuous just because it matches, you know, for one, it matches the color of the fabric and because it's on such a small area of the project. So that I don't think is a like a real big deal in my opinion. All right, so wait, where's my? See, I just lost. Okay, so here's my marks. So my mark is here, and my mark is here. All right, so I need to. You may have to mark it a little bit more. So now I need to. Now I know I need to sew from about here to here. So you can see these are my marks I made with the marking pen. All right, let's move on to the next. Uh, one. All right, we're just going to put this off to the side. Okay, at least now I know where I need to sew. I might mark a little bit more. Just I just want to make sure this is like very... The thing I've learned from making this, I want to make sure my marks are very, very visible on the fabric. Uh, and then I can actually remove them later on with the iron. So, all right, let's do the next one. And then all we have to do after this is literally just sew that opening closed and that's it. So really it's not really, this is not a super time consuming project. Okay, so let's do another guy here. All right, we're about two hours in and yeah, we're going to, I mean, yeah, so I'll be, I'll be able to make, um, I mean, we should be done with these scarves definitely within the next hour. So really it would take me about less than a half an hour to make one scarf. So that's not too, that's really not too bad when you average it out. So 
and I feel like I can get fat. I feel like I can definitely get faster with this as well. So that's not too bad of a time frame, I think. Okay, so we are at the end here. Get my chapstick. Get an extra thread here. These threads all over the place are driving me a little crazy, but that's all right. All right, so just have to insert the chopstick. Okay. All right, now we got some nice, yeah, look at this beautiful, like beautiful ends, corners here, very, very nice, very sharp points here. That's what you want. Now turn this other guy inside out. So you just do it on either side and you're gonna to wanna to turn this right side out. All right. I'm just sort of pulling it out. Okay. All right, here is the other end. Where is my opening? Here we go. Found this. All right, yeah, this, these corners look beautiful too. And this is why I trimmed the corners because if you don't trim them, your corners are gonna little, little, look a little wonky because there is a lot of bulk in them from that extra fabric. So by trimming that, you are getting rid of the extra fabric. All right, and I'm not poking too hard. All right, so let's press this. Just gonna start off with this in the middle here. Um, so you can see I'm like finger pressing the fabric away from the seam as I'm pressing it lightly. Again, I don't wanna put like a super deep crease into this fabric because I'm just gonna be pressing this again soon. I'm just doing it kind of just to get this away from itself. Okay. But you see how if I just take this end now, like take this seam on the edge, it folds, like it folds just a lot easier when you do this. I'm telling you guys, it just is gonna be much easier. And you can already kind of tell. Okay. There we go. All right. And I'm as I'm going, I'm using my fingers to roll the seam away from the edge here. So you see what I'm doing here? So I'm just sort of finger pressing it as I go. Lots of fun here. Move that lint roller away. We'll do the same thing on the other side and then we'll close up that opening. All right. You see him sort of Thread on here, I want to tuck inside. Okay. You see how like when I do this, it makes pressing this a lot easier because the seam has already been pulled away from, the fabric has already been pulled away from the, the seam. All right, these are, these are gonna be lo some nice looking scarves here. Really nice. Let me just sort of roll this away too. There we go. All right, well, here is my, and also, you, see, I've got a couple loose threads here I'm gonna need to trim. Let me just get my scissors here. Okay. Okay. 
And now I'm at the opening here and I need to, all right, oh, here's another loose thread here. Being real careful here. So now I need to line up the fabric in the opening, just make it line up. That's the whole goal is to make it line up with the rest of the, the seam here. So just, you want it to look seamless. Like you want it to look like it, like it's one continuous line here. All right. And it's pretty much there. All right, I do need to, there's a little extra fabric on this side that I need to sort of press out here. So you see, I'm kind of using my finger and I'm just rolling this away from the seam. All right, ah, there we go. All right. What is going on here? All right, actually, you can also use your finger and kind of put it inside too and that'll help. Okay, there we go. This'll be nice. All right, kind of roll this away from itself. So you see, I wanna press this fabric a little more. This fabric needs to be a little more um, pressed in. So it's kind of sticking out a little bit. So I'm just sort of finger pressing this in a little bit and then I'll press this out again. All right, yeah, I need to use my iron. Just gonna take the very tip of the iron and sort of gently press this. There we go. This is definitely helping. Yeah, if you're watching this and you don't sew, you're welcome here. I wanted this to be a place for people who are not only sew, but who are also just curious about the process or just wanna see how things are made when they're um, done in a sewing studio. So. If you're just here for curiosity, that's cool too. See, this lines up pretty evenly now. You really can't tell that there is a, like, and that was the purpose that I, I didn't want you to be able to tell where the opening is. And you really can't at this point. Right, so let me just press this. So now I'm just gonna take my glue bottle I'm also gonna use this and sort of wipe off. I mean, this is gonna be on the inside of the project anyway, so no one will really see. I'm just gonna run a little bit of glue inside on the fabric on that like extra little flap there. And then I'm just going to, all right, close this up. Oh, and I need to make sure I need, I need to mark where I need to sew. So I'm gonna be sewing about here to about here, okay, it's about here to here. That mark kind of disappeared, okay. Wait, I see it. All right, now I'll press this, press this uh, to dry the glue. And this is just my temporary way of glue basting. All right, so I need to sew about right here. Okay, to about right here, all right. I'm gonna put a pretty generous mark here just because I found that this is heat soluble. So that's uh, something I wanna do just so I can make sure I can actually see. Um, Cause if I don't do this, it's gonna be really hard to tell where I need to sew the opening closed. All right, so right here, I'm putting like a really good strong, strong mark here so I can tell. All right, so this is pretty visible. All right, on to the next one. And I'm gonna look at my, look at this one just to make sure. Okay, yeah, I can definitely see the marks here. So I just need to be able to see the marks. If I'm using light colored fabric, I can use a marking pen like this, but because this fabric is dark, um, your regular marking pen is gonna be pretty hard to see. Uh, but this one, I feel like I marked it well enough just do one more that I should really be able to see this. Um, okay, let's work on the next one. We'll let this dry for a little bit. All right, so two down, four to go, and then we'll go back to the sewing machine and close these up. And that's really it for this uh, project. So it's really not too time consuming. And then we'll be, we'll be making more. Okay, let's 
let's pull this through. Let's see where our viewers are today. We've got um, one on Sewing Report Live. Hello, hello. But yeah, I wanted this. You can come in and out, you know, no, no pressure here. Just whenever you're able to. Let me go ahead and check uh, some. All right, let me check comments and stuff. Hold on a second. We'll go ahead and do that. I did post an announcement on Instagram as well to let people know about the live. All right, I also have to use the restroom soon, so I may do that in a little bit. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We're up to 337 subscribers on this channel. That is super exciting. Okay, and then all right, let's see if we got any comments here. All right, no new comments on this one. Let me check my main sewing report channel real quick. All right, no new ones here. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's turn this right side out. Yeah, I've tried different days for this live stream. Sunday seems to be a good weekend day. I'm still trying to figure out permanently what days I want to do during the week. I'm not really sure. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure about Friday either because I feel like on Friday night, people tend to be doing stuff. Same for Saturday night. So I think I might avoid Fridays and Saturday nights. At least I might... Next week, because it's Easter, I might do Saturday afternoon, maybe. We'll see. We'll have to see. I don't know what days I want. I want to do this regularly. I'm just trying to come up with the schedule that works for me and also works for everyone watching. Uh, so if you have any thoughts on what days during the week uh, you would prefer to watch a live stream, also like during the day, nighttime. I know sometimes people will put this on while they're working uh, during the day. So that's cool. Or at night, well, after dinner, while they are maybe like working on something or just chilling. So let me know what you think about days of the stream or like, you know, time frames and that kind of thing. So, because I'm still sort of trying to work on this, uh, but I would like to do this multiple days a week, every week. That is my long-term goal. If I can get this channel monetized and it makes sense, Plus, I'm doing, like, that's the thing. I'm making this anyways for the Etsy shop, so I might as well be, uh, you know, why not just do a live stream while I'm working on this already? So, because this is what I would be normally doing. So that's sort of what I'm thinking. Uh, but welcome if you are joining. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report, and we are live from The Sewing Room. I'm also be going to be numbering these episodes chronologically, uh, just throughout time. So this is day six of doing this. So this is not day six of a particular project. This is just day six of me live streaming my sewing. Uh, so I will be numbering these episodes chronologically so you can look back and be like, oh, this is day, you know, five of when she's doing this or this is day, you know, you know, 87 or something. Uh, so I will be numbering these episodes uh, just for like documentation purposes because uh, I would like to, I wanted to really document my sewing live, and I just thought this would be like a fun thing to do. So that's what we're doing. All right, let's uh, press this. I'm also probably going to need to get some more water. The ice melted in my water, so I'm going to need to get some more ice at some point. My hair is in my face. Ugh. Water is, oh, it tastes so good. I had a couple co cups of coffee today, so that was fun too. All right, so my opening is here, okay.
this guy out. Sorry, my hair is really getting in the way here. Usually I like to put it up, but I just did it, so I figured I would leave it down today. We'll see if this, I don't know if this is working out though. All right, so see now, because I pre-pressed the opening, like this lines up really nicely. So this is like right in line with the seam, so I really don't need to like do much. All right, I'll trim that thread in a little bit. We'll trim this thread at the end here. So you see, you really can't even tell, like you can't distinguish the seam from like the regular like lining or from the opening. So that's actually what you want. Let me just press this one area because this seam is a little out of whack here. This looks pretty good overall. Also, I need to move this because the base of my iron is sort of going off the table. All right, so I need to mark where this is here. All right, so I need to sew from about here. So you see, here's where the stitching ends, and then I, I'm gonna sew a little past it so it overlaps a little bit. So I'm gonna sew from here to here, and then I'm going to glue base this shut, but look how well this lines up with the rest of the seam line. You really can't tell the difference, which is what you want. So you can see, here it is, and it, it made all the difference that I kind of pre-pressed it before turning it right side out. All right, let's put a little glue here. Yeah, and once we top stitch this, these scarves are done, so that's it. So I'm gonna make sure this lines up evenly with the rest, okay. Making sure this is good, this looks pretty, looks pretty good overall, yeah, you really can't tell. All right, and I'll just, Hit this with the iron. All right, so yes, as you say, you can see I need to remark this. Yeah, I need to kind of redo the mark. The iron definitely takes the mark away. So let's do this again. Also gonna mark this line. This is a white marking pen for dark fabrics. I do sell this in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. This is great for dark fabrics and the mark as you can see, it's removed, it's definitely removed by heat. So if you hit it with the iron, the mark disappears. So I'm just gonna do a little mark and I'm just using this to clearly denote my start and stopping point for the sewing. Otherwise, at this point, I would literally have no idea where I need to sew. So that's why I'm doing that is to be able to know where I need to start and stop. Okay, and I need to sew just need to do this area here because this is a little, this seems a little, all right, here we go. This is a little wonky, okay. Yeah, so you see it, this definitely took away the mark. Yeah, so I need to re, yeah, you can see it totally disappeared when I hit it with the iron, so I need to mark it again. All right, here we go. So good to know. All right, so I'm gonna mark this. I'm marking this really clearly so that I can still see it. Let's do another one. We're, we're getting there. All right, so we got one. We got three, we got three down, three to go, and then we'll be sewing these up. All right, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna trim some of these threads too. Some of the ones that are like really loose, I'm just gonna trim a little bit with my scissors. 
see, it's not too bad. All right, yeah, so I think it'll take about three hours for six scarves. So about, it'll be about a half an hour per scarf, and I'm charging $19 per scarf. So that's actually better time-wise. This is way better than those curved zipper pouches I made and put in the Etsy shop. So uh, this, this is definitely a much better project for uh, sewing to sell, making to sell, in my opinion. Make sure I'm gonna check YouTube make sure we're still cool on YouTube I don't know it's hard to monitor all of these at the same time okay yeah, first time chat yeah we got a we got a spammer on twitch so that's fun all right we're still good on YouTube here so that's cool yes help me get the likes up guys if you're watching this hit the like button if you haven't already and you're here I would love for you to hit the like button. Okay, our live stream is still okay. Sometimes I, I'll check just to make sure we're not like kicked offline or something. I mean, who the heck knows? You know, I've had some, I've had some weird technical issues at times. Pull this out. All right, here we go. Now we're at the end. check our rumble chat i honestly don't know how many viewers we've had on rumble but i appreciate everyone watching on rumble too i know this is kind of a new platform for me and on twitch we've had like a couple i think a couple viewers on twitch i don't know twitch is the one where i'm like yeah i have no idea i i don't game at all to be honest with you so i honestly don't you know i'm definitely not in the game i don't consider myself in the gaming community that's for sure all right, but I do appreciate everyone watching. All right, do we have any comments? All right, no comments. Let's go live chat. Okay, no messages. But we do have two viewers currently on Rumble. So thank you for the people watching on Rumble and Twitch and YouTube. All right, so we've got these turned. All right, so let's poke out the corners on these. So here's my opening. So after this, I think we'll make some angled end scarves. We'll make some angled scarves, make a few of those. I'm not sure. I think Sunday we'll work on a different project, and then maybe next week we'll make more of these scarves. So I'm thinking that. Because I have another thing. I, I want to make myself a... Uh, I actually want to make myself a cosmetic pouch, and I want to make a gift for somebody. I have something in mind that involves doing some embroidery and maybe doing like a quilted version. So I'm thinking maybe something along those lines would be really fun. So maybe we'll do something like that. Okay, got this guy. I do hope I have enough zip. I have to figure out if I have enough zippers too. Or maybe we'll make an everyday pouch. I'm not sure what I wanna do for the gift for this friend, um, but I would like to make them sort of a customized, like a custom uh, zipper pouch. So, but I'm not sure which one yet. All right, let me move the cup away so I don't get the cup. I don't want to melt the cup with the iron. I think that would be kind of bad. All right, so I'm kind of pressing everything away. Okay. Let me 
press it in this side too. Notice I'm sort of pressing, using my finger to press the fabric away from the seam, which is what you want. All right, let's, now let's kind of press this out to the side. So now you can see it's a little easier to press with the seam all the way on the side here. It's just, I, I just find it makes it a little bit easier for me. That's just something I'm, I've been doing. That's been working out okay so far. Okay. There we go. Um, notice I don't even have to use any steam on this rayon. It presses out really nicely. Okay, so let's get this guy. Okay, here's my opening. Gets. All right, I'm gonna have to press this fabric in a little bit. It's a little too. All right, let's press this. And look at the other side too. Again, the pressing makes all the difference with sewing projects. So if you are new to sewing, uh, I, would, I would encourage you to work on your pressing skills. And when you're making anything, make sure to press, press along the way at each step. It'll honestly make a big difference in how your finished project looks. All right, Tara's here. Hello, Tara. By the way, Tara, thank you. Tara ordered a set of the curved zipper pouches. Thank you very much, Tara. I think your order should be getting to you fairly, hopefully fairly soon. Um, I shipped it out Monday. So, but thank you, Tara, for the support. I really appreciate everything. And for, and of course, for watching, really appreciate that. All right, let's, we're making more purse scarves today, Tara. All right, I'm going to be pressing this out. There we go. Oh, all right, Tara got her package today. Awesome, wonderful. Also, I really appreciate the fact that you bought something handmade, even though it's pretty clear you do your own sewing too. Uh, so you really did not have to do that, but it is much, it is very much appreciated. So thank you very much for, um, for the support. All right. I hope you like your pouches. Even though that's the thing, I know you could make them yourself too. So I really, that does not go unseen. All right, so here is my, see how nice this opening lines up with the rest of the seam line here? So I shouldn't have too much trouble uh, pressing this out. All right, let me just get the iron here. All right, yeah, this seems to be working out all right. This side is pressing out really nicely. Okay, let's get this. Yeah, this is this one's looking really nice here. All right. How cute. All right, and I am working on editing the like more concise walkthrough tutorial for the main YouTube channel. So I am working on that. I hope to get that out on Saturday, I'm thinking. So I'm hoping by Saturday I can get that done. All right, let me just sort of need to, some of this glue is sort of getting all built up here. Okay, so hopefully by Saturday that video will hit the main channel. I just need to I'm getting close to being done. It's not done though. All right. All right, two more and then we, oh yeah, and I need to, I need to mark where the opening is. All right, so, all right. The opening is definitely like around 
here. Okay, forgot about that part. Definitely can't forget that. All right, so the opening is around here. All right, definitely over here. All right, so I need to mark. All right, I need to sort of wait for this fabric to cool down too because the mark just keeps disappearing. But I know for a fact that I need to sew around from here to here. Okay. Ah, all right, so now this is pretty much closed up. But you see the iron, the heat from the iron is definitely fading the marks really fast. Uh, all right, so let's put these, I need to make sure I can really see these. So I'm really marking up the heck out of this. And then I will be ironing these later to get the mark out, but I need to make sure I can clearly see my start and stopping points. So that's what we'll be doing. All right, we'll let this dry a little bit and then we'll, in the meantime, we'll go on to this guy. Okay. All right, let's turn this right side out. All right, slow sewing here. Yes, I think it'll take about three hours to make six scarves. So again, half an hour, per, definitely better than five hours. Uh, for a set of pouches, that's for sure. So a half an hour per finished item is not bad, especially if I'm gonna be selling these for $19. And the price comparison, again, I think I'm going to market this to like the high-end designer bag folks, uh, just because they're used to paying $200 for one of these. So $19, I think would look pretty appealing, especially if I pick the right fabrics. And again, confession, I I probably shouldn't have done this, but I ordered more rayon fabric last night. Uh, I ordered some real, it was really cute. Uh, I ordered some really cute Rifle Paper Co. fabric that I'm going to be using to make some projects. It was super, I couldn't resist it. It was so, it was such cute fabric. Okay. Pull these right side out. So you have half an hour for a scarf isn't terrible. And honestly, I could probably, if I get down to it, I could probably end up doing it faster um, down the line once I make more of these. So I think down the road, I should be able to get a little zippier. Maybe I can get down to 20 minutes on average per scarf. That would be cool. And again, that's what you can do if you're making to sell is uh, try to be efficient with your process so that it doesn't take you, so that you can make more items in the same amount of time. That will definitely help you. All right. All right, so we're at the end of this. Let me get my chopstick out and then we will. All right, here's my opening. All right. <clears throat> All right, got one and done. All right, time to press this. All right, here, let me take my chopstick back out. All right, I gotta find it too. Ah, what just happened? Here we go. All right, so. All right, I want the, yeah, I definitely want the seam See, here's my opening, and I'm kind of also pressing it so that my seam, uh, so that the seam matches up with the rest of the, so that the opening matches up with the rest of the seam. And that's helping too. Okay. Let's 
get this skill in. All right. Let's get the other side. All right, and I'm also going to go ahead and press the opening section. I think this will make it easier, too. Oh, wait. Yeah, I definitely need to... You know what? This needs to be pressed in a little bit more. This needs a little more... Like, you see how some areas... I feel like this particular section just needs to be pressed in a bit more because... I want there to be a little more of a seam allowance at the opening here. So I'm going to press a little bit more this way. There we go. We'll get that a little bit later. Okay, so let's press this seam away. Okay. But I really appreciate Tara's order. Let's read some of your comments. All right, I rewound and saw a bit of the beginning of this. I don't mind comments read live on the playback. As long as the comments are read out loud, it stinks when you watch and hear only one side of the chat. That's true. Like, if someone just reads, like, in response to the comments, but they don't actually read or show the comment, you are missing some of the context, and that can make it difficult for replay viewers. Yes, you got your package. That's awesome. You are definitely more experienced as a sewist. I've done them, but I avoid zipper projects. Zippers can be a little tricky. Like that's, you know, that's for sure. Zippers, yeah, especially certain types of zipper insertion can be a little, a little bit of a headache. So I, I feel you there. I feel you. I only try to, ah, so you see now I gotta, all right. You see, I need to like line this all up. Okay, here we go. All right. So I'm very careful around the opening section because I want, again, I want this to really line up nicely. All right, I might have to redo this sec. Like, again, you, you can always like repress and repress. Got my iron set to high right now. All right, oh, and I need to, you guys see, I really need to kind of manhandle this part. This is sort of getting out of whack here. Don't really want that. Definitely not. Okay, so Tara wants me to do a fabric haul video. I might do, I might do one of like some of my nicest fabrics. I might, I'm thinking, maybe I'll do that, especially since Tara, I just ordered uh, a, a, like another truckload of Rifle Paper Co. rayon. That I, honestly, I have other rayon, but I saw these prints and I just fell in love with them. And I think they would make really cute purse scarves. So, you know, we'll do that and then, you know, I'll, be able to offer a pretty wide variety of purse scarves uh, prints in the shop. I, I mean, I really hope these sell. The other thing is, even if I don't do purse scarves, I could easily make um, hair ties. Like, I could make scrunchies. I'm thinking about doing scrunchies with um, the extra, like, tie on the back. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that, yeah, like a scrunchie, but then have a little tie for extra detail. So I could make some of those, and I think those would probably sell okay because... The fabric is cute. Uh, but yeah, I like that I did. I might do a haul of some of my, like, night, you know, favorite fabrics or something like that. So that could be something in the works for the future. That's a good idea. Okay. So we've got this guy. All right. Yeah, this, I think this seam lines up pretty nicely now. So yeah, this is the opening, and you really, like, at this point, you really can't tell where it is. So that's that's actually what you want for your opening. You don't really want to be able to tell 
where like where it is. So if you can't, that's actually ideal. So we'll get this side. <clears throat> okay. So now here was the seam over here. So yeah, we're getting, oh boy. I think that was like steam or something. I don't know what that was. That was kind of weird. All right, let's. Okay, yeah, there's a little bit of a wrinkle there I gotta press out. Here we go. Get this side. Got. This one's almost done. I just have to glue base the opening. So the opening is here. I'm also going to press this a little bit this way. Yeah, just got to press. There we go. Just got to press the seam a little bit this way. All right. So see, here is my opening. So I need to mark where where I need to start start and stop sewing. So my stitching ends here, so I need to mark about here, and then I need to mark about here. All right, yeah, this is definitely having a hard time staying with the heat from the iron, but that's all right. Okay, so let's put some glue in here. Getting hungry, guys. I'm getting a little hungry. We'll see. Okay, so now I just need to press this. All right, let me press this out a little too. See, this, this seam kind of got folded in, so I just need to, all right. Yeah, and see this mark? Yeah, the mark totally disappeared with the iron, so I need to make the mark again. So that's one thing about these pens is that it does seem to be heat soluble. So you may need to do it. Uh, if you put iron over it, you're gonna need to mark it again. Uh, so, hey, good to know though, how you remove the pen mark is just iron over it. All right, so I need to, all right. All right, I'm making really, really obvious marks. So if you can see this, the mark is right here and right here. And yeah, this one's already fading. So I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to like let this cool down a little bit even more. And then just keep marking it. Okay, so this looks pretty good. All right, one more and then we can sew these all closed and then these will be finished. So let's turn this one right side out. These don't take, like the pressing takes a little bit, you know, so that's a little bit of time. Uh, but I'm also being real careful about the pressing and pretty precise. Um, just so they look nice. All right, Denise, I agree. She says, these scarves would make lovely gifts to just make a bunch and keep them handy. Exactly, you could make a few of these in an afternoon and then you can just, yeah, keep them as gifts or if you're giving, um, these would be perfect for Easter baskets. So if you're doing Easter baskets, you could tie these to the Easter basket so it's decoration plus it's also an added little gift. You can, this is fairly scrap friendly if you have long scraps. Like if you've got like some strips of fabric, those would be good for that. So I think there's a lot of ways you can use these, but yeah, they would be perfect for just little gifts, especially if you have someone in your life that loves uh, handbags and purses, uh, they give them a few of these so they can accessorize their bag. All right. All right, one more, and then we can sew these up. All right. I hope I don't, and I hope I don't get any bobbin issues. <laughs> that would be great. That would be great if I cannot do that. All right. So we're gonna poke my chopstick through. All right, yeah, it's about 2.42. So yeah, we should be done with these about three, like honestly about three o'clock, and then we'll make more. Might take a bathroom break at some point. All right, so we got this going on. Notice I'm not I'm not poking out the corners too hard. I'm just being real gentle with it. All 
All right. <clears throat> Get some more water. All right, so here's my opening. So I just need to poke this out at the corners and then we can press this and then sew all of these closed. So again, I'm not using too much force here, being pretty gentle here. Okay, yeah, this, these corners look really nice here. Sort of look like ears, you know, like cat ears or something, I don't know. I'm just being silly here. Okay, here's my opening. I need to take the chopstick back out. Where are you going? Okay. All right, so let's see. Let's see how much I need. Let's see here. So sort of gonna. So I'm really just figuring out like where I need to fold this so that it line so that the opening lines up with the rest of the seam here. All right, there we go. That looks pretty okay. Let's see here. Yeah, that looks actually pretty. I think this will look okay. All right, so now I'm just going through and pressing the seam out from itself. All right. Uh, yes, I am Eastern time. So yes, I'm Eastern time as well. All right. All right. So now we're going to roll this out. So I find it easier to kind of press the seam in the middle so you can really make sure it's pressed, like the fabric is pressed away from itself. And then press on the side like this. So press the seam on the side. I find it you get a pretty good press this way. And I need to get a paper towel at some point because there's some water. There's some random water there. It's kind of weird. Okay. All right. That's starting to sputter. That's kind of weird. Okay, fun times here. Let's move to the center again. All right, my opening's about right here. Oh, here we go. So this, yeah, this is lining up pretty nicely too. This is pretty much what I want. All right, let me roll this out from itself too. My, hus I, my husband may be home from work. I'm not sure. I didn't tell him I was live streaming today, so he's going to walk in and be like, what is going on here? All right. So let's start at this end. But you see how much better this looks when you press? Like when you first turn it right side out, it looks like a blob. But then when you press it, it looks 
you know, it looks very nice. So pressing, like that's why it's so important to press all of your projects just pretty much every step of the way. It really does help. All right, so we got this side done. Okay, so now we just have to do uh, the center and base that shut. All right, so the center is right here and I'm actually gonna press this. Yeah, this looks perfect. Like, you see like sometimes the fabric can kind of bulge out at the opening, but this fabric is totally aligned with the rest of the seam, which I think is great. Okay, so let's see where the all right, so the opening is, where is it? Okay, I'm even missing it. Okay, so the opening is right here. So you see, that's perfect. All right, so I'm gonna put a little, so the, I'm gonna be sewing about here to here. So I can actually mark, I can mark one side with the pink pen since it'll be on like the white part of the fabric here. So I need to sew from about here to here here it's about here and then put a little glue here a little glue and it lines up really nicely all right just a little bit of glue here actually I might not even need the iron for this part I might just like because it's already kind of heated so I might just let this air dry all right so yeah this looks see so this is where i'll be sewing but look how even this is you really can't tell where the opening is in regards to the rest of the stitch line okay so let's make a little more of a mark here we'll be able to sew these uh so i am using denise wants to know what marking pens i'm using i have these in the etsy shop this is a clover uh, air soluble pink pen it has an eraser on it it's also water soluble so I do sell both of these and this is a white marking pen also by Clover this apparently is heat soluble because if you iron on the mark it will disappear uh, so just know that uh, if you're using this but this is good for darker fabrics and then because the section I need to mark was on the white part of the print I was able to use my a pink marking pen but I do sell these and I also sell the purple marking pen this is good as well but it's not showing up as good on the fabric so that's why I'm not using this today so I do have I keep a variety of marking pens on hand for different purposes all right so now we're ready to actually sew these up so let's take the scarves over to the sewing machine and we'll get these all stitched up and then I think after I do that I might take a restroom break because I do sort of uh, need to use the bathroom. So we'll be doing that in a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll sew some angled scarves. All right, but let's go over to the sewing machine and get these all, like this is literally it. Like this is it, this is all we gotta do. So that's pretty nice, huh? All right, let me get the, uh, my solo cup here. And I'll be sewing with about a 2.75 stitch length also. Okay, my rabbit's laying near the trash can. That's her new, I guess, favorite spot. Sort of weird, but hey, whatever. It's a rabbit. She's a rabbit. She's crazy. All right. So I'm going to take each scarf and then find my mark. This is why it was important to mark everything out. Where are my marks here? Okay. Hopefully I can still see these. All right. Should be near the center here. Where? Oh wait, here we go. Okay. So you can see here are my marks here. So I need to sew from here to here um, as close to the edge as possible. And I'm going to be back stitching at the beginning and end. Uh, so this is why I, because if I didn't mark these points, I would literally have no idea where uh, to sew. And I'm going to be daisy chaining again. So I'll, all, uh, all of the uh, uh, projects will end up being attached to each other and then I'll just keep trimming the threads as I go but let me I'm gonna hold these threads just so they don't get a rat's nest because this is gonna be visible this stitching is gonna be visible on the project I want this stitching to look fairly nice all right so all right here we go let me hold this put needle down okay hold the thread a few stitches forward all right, couple back stitches. 
All right, and then sewing to this point here. And yeah, I'm trying to sew, this is a little less than an eighth of an inch, but I'm just trying to sew as close to the edge as I can. All right, so that's my stopping point. Okay, and I just needed a few lock stitches back, or back stitches just to keep this in place. All right, so that's one done. Literally, that's it. I'll trim the threads at the end um, for the most part. So we'll just move on to the next one. So this is my stitching, but yeah, it's real close to the, it's very close to the edge, so it's not super visible. And it's just a little, you know, just, so just a little bit of stitching will be visible on the project, but really not very much. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, and I can definitely see these marks. So I made these marks. I'm glad I made these marks really clear and visible because uh, otherwise I would, I would literally be kind of like lost. So, all right, and we're just gonna, all right, so here, all right, let's, actually I'm gonna move a little closer to the edge here. Let's see here, a little close to the edge. Okay, here we go. And don't be afraid to like kind of really position your needle carefully. Don't be afraid to do that. Let's do a couple back stitches. Okay, and then more. go forward again. And yeah, I'm trying to stay fairly close to the edge here. And when I get to this, I'm just going to back stitch a little bit. All right, two down, not too bad. All right, good. No, hopefully no bobbin issues. We don't, we don't need that crap right now. All right, let me find the next piece. All right, so here are my, you can see, this is why I'm glad I made really visible marks because it's at least really easy for me to tell where I need to go here. Okay. All right, a little few back stitches. And the back stitching, what that does is it keeps those stitches from popping out. So that's why it's really important to back stitch. If you don't do it, your stitches are literally just gonna pop right out and you're gonna have to redo them. All right. All right, here we go. We got three down. All right, this isn't too bad. All right. and I'm. Notice they're all like connected because I'm just moving from one to another. This will save me a little time. And then at the, at the end, I will go back and trim all the threads very close to the project. Okay, here is my next one. Need to be, all right, go. All right, yeah, very close to the edge here. Back stitching, and yeah, like the the edge of this foot is about an eighth of an inch. I'm going a little, a little tighter than that, just because I think the project will look a little bit better. And I'm going. Notice I'm not sewing super fast. I'm going slow. Going pretty slow here. Okay, now I've reached the white mark. Back stitch a little bit. Okay, and that's it that's for this one. All right, we all, we are getting we're getting there, guys. We are getting there. All right, go two more to go, and then we're done with these. We are done with these. All right, got another one here. All right, do a few back stitches. Okay. There one more. A couple back stitches. All right. All right, guys, one more to go. If we have bobbin issues now, I'm gonna be really mad. All right, well, no, hopefully no. All right, one more. 
All right, and here's my marks. This is why I'm really glad I, um, yeah, I'm glad I can see them really clearly because otherwise, literally, you wouldn't really know where you needed to start and stop because everything looks the same at this point and it's, it's pretty tough to tell. Okay. So you see I'm going real, real tight here. Real close to the edge. All right, one more. Back stitch. All right, guys, that's it. That's it. Let's go back and trim these threads. All right, cool. No bobbin issues today, or at least not right this moment. We had some bobbin issues earlier, that's for sure. All right, let's take these back and then we'll get these all trimmed up. And then we're gonna take a quick break. All right, so here, here's what we have now. We've got all of our scarves done, but I need to trim all of the threads. So I'm going to use these really handy bent curved scissors also available in the Etsy shop. And I'm going to trim all of the threads. Again, just to make a nice finish. That's why I'm doing this. All right, so let's trim each one. I'm gonna trim as close to the, close to the fabric as possible without cutting into the actual fabric. You don't want that. All right. Let's trim these guys. I'm gonna get my trash, keep my trash can over here. Let's see, this one looks, okay. I have one more thread here to trim. So this is the, just the last step is trimming all your threads neatly. All right, so this one is good. And yeah, if you wanna get rid of the white marks, all you have to do is uh, apparently hit it with an iron and that'll just, yeah, that totally pretty much disappears. So that's good. And then the pink one, that will just disappear on its own. Okay. Or Denise wants to know how the rabbit is doing. She's actually chilling near the trash can. I don't know. She was acting a little crazy earlier, but you know, she's in the afternoon and the evening, she tends to take a nap. So that seems to be what she's doing. Hopefully she'll um, be pretty good for the rest of the stream. Um, Cause I, I, I can't really keep an eye on her right now. I can't see what she's doing. I can just hear her. All right, we're gonna trim these threads. So this looks pretty nice. But yeah, see, I'm gonna use the iron and I'm gonna get rid of these white marks. And that should go away, hopefully. All right, so see, here are the white marks, here and here. But yeah, when you iron over them, they literally just like disappear, so that's good. So you can get rid of the white marks that way. All right, so this one's gone, this one's good to go. And you could also put a little bit of water over it. So like, here's my water. You could just sort of sprinkle a little water on it too. And that'll, that'll help as well. If you really want to like fade those white marks, but the white marking pen is definitely a lifesaver. There we go. Let's press this out nicely. Okay. And you can also do the same thing with the pink marking pen. Let me go back to that. Let's see where the marking. Okay, so this pink marking pen will also go away with water. So this is water soluble. So it'll get really, it'll get a little more intense in color and then it'll go away. So that should go away pretty soon. All right, so here we are. All right, so we got two of these trimmed. All right, we got this one. Let's get this guy trimmed up. Okay, yeah, we got a few. Or he has to trim here. But yeah, that's why I like these scissors because you can get really super close so you don't have like random threads hanging off everything. So I think that's the nice thing about this. All right, so we got that going on. Let me get this cut. I'm being very careful 
the last thing you want to do is cut into your fabric. Uh, yeah, that would be kind of bad. All right, so let me get some water and I'll just mark. I'm going to get rid of the white marks here. So yeah, this marking pen is great because it comes out pretty easily. Oops, okay. I just dropped my lint roller. I'm going to have to get, look at how full my lint roller is. I'm going to need to, let's peel one of these off. I think we've, I think we've had enough with this. All right, so now if I just press this area, so we've got a little water here. And then if you press this, the mark will pretty much completely go away. Oops, okay, I just knocked down my lint roller. That was fun. All right, see, now the marks, yeah, the marks are like completely gone. So that's how you can get rid of the white uh, marking pen marks after you're done with the project. All right, let's get another one. Yeah, and we're pretty much, like, we're pretty much done with this. Just have to trim all of these guys. Okay. Let's trim this guy. Yeah, we'll trim. Okay, actually there's, let me trim a little bit more of this one. There's a little bit more thread here than I like. All right. All right this one looks pretty good. We'll put a little water on here. So I'm just gonna put a little water on the marks to get rid of these guys. And then we'll press this. Let's see, this one, okay, this one definitely has some threads that need to be trimmed. Okay. Put a little water on these marks. All right, that needs to be trimmed. Actually, I think this one's pretty, pretty good. Okay, let me just get some water on here. Okay, so let me just press these, get rid of the white marks. Yeah, these pens, I figured, I kind of didn't even know they were heat soluble, but the white ones definitely seem to have the marks go away just if you, just if you press it with the iron. So this must be heat soluble because it's, it's not as water soluble, but the heat definitely seems to be the thing that makes them go away. And then I think if you do like gently wash the item, I think that would also help too. All right, uh, let's press these guys. Yeah, look at this. So here are the marks here. And then when I press, like you really can't see them anymore. All right, oh, the iron accidentally turned off again. All right, let's turn the iron back on. these guys all right waiting for the iron to heat up a little bit more let's put a little water over this mark here 
This should go away, hopefully. All right, yeah, that seems to help. There we go. Yeah. All right, so now we have finished six of these scarves. We did the blunt ends. So these are the ones that are straight across. And this is the style that Louis Vuitton sells for $200 and up. We just made them for a fraction of the cost. And yes, I do plan on selling these in the Etsy shop. So let me show you our hard work here. So we have three, four, five, and six. So we're, we're, we're making it, we, we're getting up there. All right, we got a few of these guys. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick restroom break and get some more water. And then I'll meet you back here in a little bit. I'm going to put on some music so you can jam to it. And then we'll come back in a little bit once I do that. I'm also going to mute my mic uh, so that you can't hear restroom sounds. So that would be good, right? All right, let me turn some music on. This night driving one is pretty good. It's not super intense. All right, so we'll keep that on. And I'm going to mute my mic, and I will meet you back here around 5.15 uh, once I use the bathroom and get some water. Uh, so we'll take a quick break, and then I'll meet you back here. Grab a snack, grab a cup of coffee or something to drink, and I'll see you in a little bit, and we're going to make more scarves tonight.
Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen and we are live from the sewing room, back from a quick break. I got some fresh water. I took a restroom intermission and we're back and we're going to make more scarves on this Thursday evening. Welcome wherever you're watching. We are live on YouTube, Twitch, and Rumble. So shout out to everyone on all of those platforms. So we've already made six scarves today. So I'm, I'm amassing quite a collection here. So you got a few of these and I plan on selling these in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. All right, so let me get the six scarves we just made. So we made six of the blunt end scarves. These are, have a straight across edge. And this is the type that Louis Vuitton sells branded as bandeaus for $200 and up. So I'm planning on charging $19 for these. Also, let me get rid of the music. All right, I think. Let me know if you guys cannot hear the music. So I just asked the music. If you are watching and you cannot hear music, let me know if you also, you can make sure you can hear me because uh, I just had to turn my mic pack off and back on again. So here are the six scarves we just made. It took about three hours. So about a half an hour for each scarf. I also have this one I made the other day and we have, I believe we have like, let me see, we've got these angled ones. So this is what we're going to be making next. Same, basically the same scarf, just with a 45 degree angled end. And this is the type that Hermes sells called Purse Twillies. And Twilly is trademarked, so I cannot use that in Etsy listings. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got six of the angled scarves at this point, and then we've got uh, seven of the blunt end so we're going to be making some more angled end scarves i've got yet more fabric i can use so we're going to be making a few of those uh tonight so we'll see how far we can get see how many we can make in one day and this is sort of a casual sewing hangout and chill this is not some sort of like this is like again i hope you pick stuff up from this but this is not really like a classroom instruction uh tutorial or anything like that Okay, so we're gonna get going and get started with the next batch of scarves and see how many we can get. Uh, I do hope to have these up in the shop and listed soon. I do have to take all the photographs and do all of like the Etsy description stuff, all of that stuff. So there's still quite a bit to do after I make them, but the scarves you see being made here will be available for sale pretty soon. Let me get my trash can back. Uh, so if you are watching this and you don't want to make a purse scarf, you don't have to. You can buy one from me. Uh, they will be $19 each and available definitely by next week. So hopefully soon. And I'm going to show you what you can do with this purse scarf. So this is my little sample here. This is my own purse. And I've dressed it up with a chain from this website called Dress Up Your Purse. They sell a lot of really cool bag accessories and also they have like small leather goods such as some dupes of Louis Vuitton items. So they do have some of those. I am a Dress Up Your Purse affiliate. A link is in the description box. But I have used two scarves to wrap. So I used the angled end scarf to wrap around the handle and then I used the blunt end scarf to tie a bow around it. So this is actually two scarves that I've used, but look how much more like jazzy this bag is with a little bit of decoration. I added this little chain. Like, so it goes from like kind of blah to like fabulous in a few minutes just by tying an accessory on it. You could make these scarves in any fabric. So like whatever kind of fits your mood, do it for the seasons, different occasions. You can do holiday stuff. Uh, these would make, I also bought an Easter basket, so I do have, I will be taking some photos. You can tie them on baskets, use them as embellishments. You can use these as hair ties, uh, you know, neck scarves, pretty much anything. You can also alter the measurements to make them as long, short, or wide as you want. So you can basically take what I've done 
and customize it to whatever size you want. So mine are about two inches wide by about 36 inches long. And the cut of fabric that I used is about 37 inches long by about five inches wide. And I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance and that's how I will end up with this particular size. All right, let me put this purse aside and we will get started with the next batch of scarves. All right, let me make sure my iron is nice and hot. All right. So the first thing I'm doing is finding the center point on the fabric. And again, I've cut these, I've already kind of pre-cut out the fabric, so I didn't have to do that on stream. We are live from a sewing room in Florida. We're hanging out. We're gonna chill. I'm wearing sweatpants as normal. All right, so I basically use the center mark to figure out where I need, just where I need to fold the fabric over. So you're folding it right sides together the long way. And I'm going to use my marking pen uh, to mark about a two, a little over a two, probably about two and a half inch mark uh, opening for turning. So this little section here, we will not be sewing. This is how you're going to turn the scarf right side out. Okay, and I'm going to be glue basting this. And this is a rayon, a really nice drapey rayon fabric. This is a discontinued print from Cloud9 Fabrics. Really nice uh, fabric though, good quality. Uh, Cloud9 has a lot of organic fabrics. Not all of their fabrics are totally organic, uh, but they are, they do, it seems like this company is trying to be more like environmental, uh, environmentally friendly, which is cool. And I'm just gonna go around along this and uh, glue based on the seam right sides together. Uh, so this is pretty much what you do to get this project started. Um, so we're, we're gonna work on a few of these at a time, you know, maybe like six or so. We'll see, we'll see what we can do. All right, we'll get these guys going. All right, and I'm just ba making sure the glue is also within a quarter inch uh, seam allowance. So you don't wanna, you don't want the glue to be too far into the fabric from the edge. You just line up these edges. I'm just basically pressing with a dry iron. But welcome if this is your first time here. We're having fun, we're chilling. It's, it's a Thursday night. I got nowhere else to be. My husband's at work. So my husband is a plumber. Uh, so I don't really ever, some days he gets home earlier than others. So I really never know what time he's gonna get home. All right. Get my iron. And some of the supplies are available in the Sewing Report Etsy shop or they're linked below down in the description box. Oh, and real quick, we have to give a shout out to today's live stream sponsor, which is the Sewing Report Etsy shop, of course. This is where you can find fabric and sewing supplies and also soon to be handmade luxury gifts such as these scarves. Uh, so this channel, the Sewing Report Live, is not yet monetized on YouTube. I am working on it. I'm trying very hard. I am streaming my little heart out here. So hopefully we can get monetized fairly soon. But in the meantime, supporting the Sewing Report Etsy shop for all of your sewing and fabric and gift needs really helps out. So if you haven't checked out the Etsy shop, I would really encourage you to. Got a lot of great stuff in there. Free shipping over $35. I do only ship within the United States right now just because it's, you know, it's it's just hard with like other countries and, what, and that sort of thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, for U.S. customers, I've, I've got you. Free shipping over $35 on pretty much anything in the shop. I sometimes have sales, especially on the, the fabric bundles and whatnot. All right, let's see, we got, how many viewers do we have on Twitch right now? I'm honestly not even sure how to tell how many viewers you have. On, okay, we've got one viewer on Twitch besides me. So cool, welcome. We really appreciate everyone watching. Yeah, I honestly, yeah, we got like one on Twitch. Or I honestly am, this is getting a little overwhelming with all the platforms you have to stream on at once. I'm trying to monitor it the best I can, you know. You know, who knows? I don't even know. I haven't been on Twitch in like forever. Also, Rumble is kind of a new thing for me. I've been, um, 
I've been kind of auto syncing my channel to Rumble, so all of my YouTube videos go to Rumble as well. Uh, but this live streaming to all of the platforms is sort of like new to me, so you know, hopefully this, you know, I don't know where this is gonna go, but I figure if I'm streaming on one platform, I might as well be like simulcasting on other places. Uh, just, just to like get the most out of it, you know what I mean? You know, if you're gonna be in one place, why not be in several if it's like pretty easy to do? So this is sort of a new thing for me, but we're, we're trying it out. And Sewing Report Live is a pretty new, the Sewing Report Live channel is only like six weeks old. Uh, so, you know, got to keep the expectations realistic here. But we're already at about 337 subscribers. So we're, we're on the road to monetization for YouTube there. So that's cool. All right. Let's get this glue based. All right, apparently there's been... Okay, a kidnapped child in my area. Uh, I have not kidnapped anyone, so it was not me. Although I will say this, I'm not trying to downplay kidnapping or anything, uh, but I used to be a TV news producer, and a lot of these kidnapping alerts, uh, they tend to be domest domestic in nature. I hate to say that, but it's true. So it's, it's, so typically it's not, Usually, like, a kid's been kidnapped by a random stranger. Usually, it's one of a few situations. It's some sort of domestic situation where a family member has taken a kid without the permission of, like, the other parent or something. A lot of, like, nasty custody type stuff. The other thing that happens, and I've seen this, unfortunately, more often than you'd want, is it's a teen who, like, went off with, like, an adult. Like, so... It would be like a 15-year-old girl who met a guy who's 40 online and has gone somewhere with this 40-year-old. But obviously, since they're under 18, they really can't consent to that. So um, that is can be technically considered like a kidnapping. I'm not joking. Um, not to get too dark with this, uh, uh, but a lot of these alerts just aren't really what they seem on the surface. I'll just say that. So, but very few of these kidnapping situations are like a kid was snatched by a stranger at the mall. It's usually not that. It's usually something, it's usually something involving somebody that the kid knows. So it's not usually like that, you know, it's not usually that like cra as crazy as you think. I mean, that's still kind of crazy, but it's not like, you know, it's not like the movie kidnappings you see. It's usually something a little like you know, less, less crazy. I'll just say that. Okay. I'm going to get a few of these done. I don't know what I'm going to eat. I, I got to figure out dinner tonight too. I don't know what I'm doing for that. We'll see. We will see. I got some stuff for sandwiches. So I usually make a, I've been making bagel sandwiches lately and those have been pretty like tasty and pretty like easy to do. I also have to vacuum out the rabbit uh, pen tonight. Her, she got hay all over the place, so we got to we gotta do that. She can be a little bit messy with her hay. She really likes her hay. Rabbits are like little monsters. If you don't have them, they're very cute. But they're definitely like very destructive little creatures. Uh, so that's always fun too. All right, so we got one of these. All right, so I'm going to show you what I do with this later. So this is going to be my spot for turning. I'm just going to mark this again. I feel like this pen is not showing up as well as I thought. Plus these pens, I will say, like these last for, if you use them a lot, they'll last for a few months. You do need to, rep like these don't last forever. Let's be real, it's a, it's a marking pen. So it's, it's basically like a marker. So every few months, if you use these very heavily, like I used this pen to trace out a bunch of pattern pieces, I will need to replace that at, at some point, you know? All right, so let's get another one of these guys done. All right, we're gonna do, like, maybe we'll try to, I mean, maybe we'll do the rest of these. Like, I don't know how many of these there are. So we'll try to do the rest of the fabric I cut and see see how this goes. Okay, so we're gonna do, this is the center point. And I, I do also sell these little squeezy glue bottles Glue not included, 
I sell these in the sewing report Etsy shop. I have a few left um, and I'll show you the glue I use. It's literally just the, this is actually the generic version. It's literally just the Elmer's washable school glue. So this is all I use. This is like the real cheap uh, glue. This, I mean, this is literally like, you can get this for like 50 cents during back to school sales. Uh, I have the Target generic version. This was literally 50 cents and look how much you get. So you don't need to use the like really expensive basting glue. Just get some of this. This washes out. It's basically like starch. Um, and this works on natural fabric. So this will not work on things like polyester fabric or like a, a synthetic. This will work pretty well on anything that's more of a natural fiber. Think cotton works on rayon, will work on linen or some cotton blends. Um, this works somewhat on cotton knits, but not, not super well. Uh, so this is good for quilting though. So I use this a lot and I just stick it in this bottle and then you know, you have a fine tip. If you want like a real thick line of glue, you can use the regular tip. But I usually use the, um, uh, I usually stick it in another, another bottle. All right, Denise has a question. Is having a rabbit like ha a cross between a cat and dog? Denise, I would say it's not really either. Rabbits are kind of their own, their own thing. They're more, I would say though, as far as the maintenance level for a pet, they're more like a dog. Rabbits are not low maintenance pets. They require a lot more money and time and effort than I think people realize. And that's why you see a lot of those Easter bunny pets getting dumped. Unfortunately, a few weeks after they, because the parents will get them for the kid and then be like, oh, this is a lot of work. And then they, you know, drop the bunny off, which is very sad. Uh, you do need to have, like, I work from home, obviously, so that's why a rabbit works for me. If I had, like, a normal office job, I would not get a rabbit. They do need a lot of attention and care, and I think a lot of families don't really have that kind of time. Uh, so, And I also, in my opinion, I don't think rabbits are good pets for young kids. Uh, rabbits are also very delicate animals. And you need a lot of space. A lot of people put them in like a cage or something and that's not enough space for a rabbit. So if you are gonna get a rabbit, I would advise you look at this channel called um, Hooks Hollands, H-O-O-K, Hooks Hollands. The channel is run by a very lovely woman named Diane and she's done a number of different videos about a rabbit care and rabbit, um, you know, pet questions. So check out that channel. Rabbits are really great pets in my opinion, but I would not say they are low maintenance. One good thing about the rabbits though is that they're, they don't really make any sounds, so they're fairly quiet. So if you don't like barking or meowing um, and you have the time and energy to devote to a, a bunny, it might be a good pet for you, but they are quite a bit of work. Also, they chew on everything. So if, if our rabbit has actually chewed the woodwork, um, in one room. So they will absolutely do that. So if you're not cool with that, I, you know, they chew fabric. They, she's chewed like my shoes, like, so they are fairly, yeah, they're fairly high maintenance and they're very destructive. So you really, like, you really need to watch them. They also need to be neutered or spayed. Otherwise they can have a lot of issues. Uh, so they're more expensive than I think people th assume. Uh, with like the vet bills and like the care. I buy her like really good food and really, you know, nice hay. And that stuff isn't cheap. She also needs daily, um, she eats like lettuce every day. So you need to feed them fresh greens. So there's actually more work involved than a cat for sure. I would say they're definitely at least as much work as a dog. Plus they have like special you know, special care requirements that I think a lot of people are unfamiliar with. The other thing about rabbits is that they're considered an exotic pet. So you need to make sure that you have a, a, an exotic vet who does specifically rabbit care in your area. And that can be kind of tough. I've heard a lot of people, I, I happen to be very lucky that there is one in my area, but a lot of people actually don't have access to 
a rabbit savvy veterinarian in their area and that can be a challenge as well. So there's a lot about having a rabbit that I think is kind of foreign to people. So if you are looking into a rabbit as a pet, I would say definitely do some research and trying to determine what kind of bunny is for you and is it for you. Also, you can get a really, you, people get, the rabbits get dumped off at animal shelters all the time. So I would look there first if you're looking for a bunny because you can get a very um, sweet adult bunny who's already been spayed or neutered. So at least that'll save you the money from having to do it yourself. Plus there's like a risk, anytime a rabbit gets surgery, there's a risk of it, um, you know, having some issues. So at least if you already get a bunny that's been spayed or neutered, you don't have to go through that like drama. Um, so I did get my bunny new, uh, spayed and her surgery went really well, but I've heard, I've heard sometimes they don't always go super well. So just, just my little PSA about rabbit rabbits. I, I love having a bunny. She is a lot of work though. So it's, I wouldn't say it's an easy, I would definitely not say it's an easy pet at all. Just my opinion. But she is very cute. I do have some videos of her on the channel, on the Main Sewing Report channel, if you are interested in seeing more of J-Hop. She's named after a member of BTS, uh, of course. But she is very cute. She's take, I think she's chewing on her, she's chewing on her, um, I give her these palm leaf plates and she really loves them. I think she's chewing on that right now. But she's being pretty good today. She is being a good girl. Sometimes she's a little like mischievous though. She likes to, she likes to get into trouble sometimes. And that's kind of a, she can be a bit of a handful. Just, just her though. All right, let me get some more water here. So right now we're just glue basting this uh, scarf the long way, right sides together. Just using my Elmer's washable school glue in my Sewing Report branded bottle. And we're just gonna do this a few times. We're gonna make, or we'll make the rest of these scarves that I have pieces cut for. And then I might change colors and do some, do some other ones. I have some other rayons I can use that are really pretty. So I'm gonna make a few of these and I'm gonna start listing them in the shop and seeing like if, if there is a market for this, I don't know. We'll see. I feel like there might be, hopefully. That'd be cool. Okay, get this together here. All right, and I've, I'm, and I've marked my opening for turning. So this is where I will not be sewing, making sure this line is very clear here. Do another one. But if you have any questions about the project or about anything, um, let me know. Let me know. Oh, excuse me. I'm happy to answer it if I can. And here are the scarves that we've already made. So I'm going to put this here as like an example. So here's the ones that are done. And I, I really like this print. I think it's such a pretty like kind of an abstract, new, like very neutral fabric. I love, the, I just really love this fabric. It's really pretty. Yeah, actually after this, we only have like two. Yeah, so we'll be making like five of the angled ones. Okay, so I think we'll have, that's a pretty good number, I think. And then I'll have to cut more. I'll call it a night after I finish these. And then because I'm gonna have to cut more, um, I'm gonna have to cut more fabric after that. So we'll see how that goes.
I'm thinking about trying to make a quilt live too. So I think I might do a quilt in the near future. I think that would be fun. And But I'm going to try to make like a very simple quilt so it doesn't take like forever. Uh, so I might do... Who wants to see me make a quilt live? I think that would be fun. So that's one of my future goals. Here on Sewing Report Live. All right. I haven't made a quilt in a while and I'm, I'm really itching to do a quilt. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I don't know who, I, I don't know what the quilt would be for. I just want to make a quilt. But I would do like a very simple, easy design. So it was, you know, if I could make it in one or two days, like I would probably make the binding ahead of time maybe. But something that could be, that something that would come together fairly quickly, I think. Uh, using some of my, I might, maybe I would do like a solid quilt too. We'll have to see. Something kind of, you know, cool. I don't know. I'll have to figure out what fabrics I want to do for a quilt. We'll see. I do have a lot of, I have a lot of uh, quilt. And I would probably have to do a piece, I might do like a throw size. I would have to do like a pieced backing. But I do have some, I have a lot of cotton batting. I have like a big roll of it and I have a wide, it's wide back too. So I could definitely do a throw size quilt for sure. I could also do like a baby, I mean, maybe I'll do a baby quilt, I don't know. Baby quilt would be faster. And I did get some pre, I did buy a package of, I don't know where I put it though. I bought a package of um, like a pre-cut uh, crib size quilt batting. Um, so maybe I'll do like a quick baby quilt. I don't even know what I would do with it though. I do have, I do know a few people having babies. I got to figure out what I would, yeah, who I would give it to. All right. Get this side ready to go. Okay. All right, Denise, thank you for the question. So I would actually use the Juki. I figured out how to put a walking foot on it. So I would probably do everything on the Juki with the walking foot. And do, I would probably do like some straight, I usually personally like straight line quilting. So I would basically just be doing um, some, just like stitch in the ditch echo quilting. Uh, maybe I would mark some lines. So I got to figure out, I kind of like to mark like random lines on a quilt. That's also kind of fun too. So maybe something along those lines. I'm not really, not really sure. So maybe I could do like a, a very simple quilt with like a few piece strips and then just do straight line quilting across. So maybe I would do something like that. I don't know, but I think doing a quilt live would be fun. And maybe it would have like a wider interest. Like people, a lot of people just don't know how stuff is made. So that's why I wanted to do these live streams is to really highlight how, th how handmade things come together. Because when I started sewing, I didn't know, like I really didn't know a lot, so. You know, even if people don't sew, I hope they can find this show helpful just to, so that they can know how things are made, like how sewing projects are put together. Because a lot of people don't realize like how much time things take or like how much, like, like look how much ironing is involved. Like there's a lot of ironing with this, which is sort of crazy. Just gonna do a few more of these. Get these done and then we will, yeah, I need to cut more of these and I also need to photograph these, get some nice photos of everything, do all that stuff. So we'll do that. And notice like this, this rayon does have like a little bit of stretch to it. So I'm careful not to pull on it to for like, I'm being very gentle with my handling so that I don't, you know, so that the fabric stays intact. 
because I don't want it to get all stretched out or warped. So I'm being pretty careful. All right. So then after we do this, we're going to have to cut off the ends for the angles and then we will sew this up. But yeah, these are moving along pretty quickly, I think. All right, so we got two more of these guys. Oh, let me fold this in half. Yeah, and really, rayon is a really nice, it can be a little bit tricky, but it is a really nice fabric. I really like it. I love rayon. I think rayon is probably one of my favorite fabrics to work with. Plus, it makes really nice clothing items, too. Like, it's just nice. Uh, you can steam it or press it. Uh, you do have to be careful when you're washing rayon. I personally prefer to like hand wash stuff if I can, because this is kind of a delicate fabric. So I personally like, if I can hand wash rayon items, I will. In fact, on the care, I need to also need to make some care instructions up for this, uh, these scarves, and I'm going to recommend a hand wash only for this. And you know, hand wash only, lay flat, press. And that's pretty much it. So that's what I'm going to recommend for uh, buyers of this item. Okay, let's get some glue under here. I know everyone's probably like, why is she? A lot, some people think this glue is, you know, silly. Uh, but hey, you know, this helps me a lot. I saves, I feel like it saves time on the back end because I'm not having to worry about like pins or clips or anything. And I just feel the result you get from glue basting is good, like good. So that's why I keep using the glue because it works. So my mark is about here. And you don't need very much glue. Uh, yeah, this works pretty well on the rayon. So that's another reason. Um, again, the designer scarves do tend to be made with silk. Obviously, rayon is, you know, a bit more cost effective. Uh, but I like it because it has some of the properties of silk scarves. Still very pretty, but also I feel like, maybe it's just me, I feel like some fabrics are tend to prone to snagging on stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like the rayon is a little more durable in terms of, um, you know, practicality, in terms of everyday use. Uh, I feel like the rayon is not prone to snagging. And I hate, I personally do not like fabric that snags. I don't like working with it at all. Not my favorite thing to do. All right, so we're gonna make the rest of these scarves. And I gotta eat some. After I finish this, I'll eat some dinner. Let's see how we can do with this. So we'll go for a little bit here. But if this is your first time to sew and report live, welcome. We're hanging out. I'm sewing. You can chill. You can also sew something, or you can just, you know, watch and learn if you're interested in just seeing how stuff is made. That's what this channel is for. It's what it is. It is live sewing. <clears throat> All right, I got my hair did today. It's feeling good. I'm having a pretty good skin week. Um, I don't have any like crazy acne, so that's a plus. And I will say, since we got a, a water softener and a new hot water tank, um, I've noticed a difference in my skin, which has been very positive. I haven't had nearly as much acne, and my skin overall seems to be better. So I don't know, maybe there's something to it, who knows.
Yeah, I can't wait to make this. I love this fabric. I am looking forward to seeing how this turns out in my other fabrics. Um, and if these sell well, I'm going to use my Liberty of my coveted, very prized Liberty of London fabric. I'll start using that for the scarves. We'll see. But these have to sell pretty well. So I'm starting off with the Rifle Paper Co. stuff. That's a little, I feel like that's like, that's lower a lower stakes fabric to use. Still very pretty. But my Liberty of London fabric is like, oh, you know what I mean? Oh, you know what I mean. And now they also sell it at Joann's, which is kind of fun. So Joann's, I need to check it out though, because uh, Joann's sells the Tana Cotton Lawn. So that's kind of cool too. So you can now get it at Joann's. Also, you can buy Liberty of London fabric direct from the website. Um, so you can do that. They do have free shipping over a certain amount. And from what I understand, if you're getting something imported from the UK to the US, I, th from what I understand, you don't have to pay any import duties or fees if you're, the value of the item is under $800, I think. Last I heard, can't confirm, but I think if it's under $800, you don't have to pay any fees on it. So um, there's a few options if you do like Liberty of London fabric. Uh, there's now a few ways to buy it. But yeah, I love Liberty of London fabric. But yeah, this Rifle Paper Co. fabric is so pretty too. And I also ordered some fabric directly from the Rifle Paper Co. website as well. I ordered some really cute mint, mint fabric. So it's mint green and it's got like citrus on it and it's really cute. Uh, plus being in Florida, I love that sort of thing. So I'm gonna use that to make um, some items to sell as well. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's my goal. I'm using up, I decided this year in 2023, I'm using up my, I'm gonna use my like cool fabric instead of just sitting on it. I'm finally going to start doing, and of course I ordered more fabric, so kind of defeated the purpose, but I ordered some really, yeah, really cute Rifle Paper Co. fabric. I'm really excited about it. It'll be really awesome fabric. So I do have a lot of really nice stuff. So I'm gonna be making stuff and selling it here. And we're gonna see, we're gonna see how that goes. Maybe I could be known for being a, you know, handmade Etsy seller. And that's the thing, I've been on Etsy for two years, but I've been only selling supplies. So this is my first foray into uh, selling stuff I made. So this is kind of scary, but kind of exciting. So we'll see how it goes. And so that's what I want to do. I'm going to be documenting all of that here on Sewing Report Live uh, and showing you what I make. So basically everything you can buy in the Etsy shop, you can also see the stuff being made. So that's sort of the whole point of this channel is being able to see stuff being made. So that's, that's what we're doing here. All right, I'm trying to line up the edges as carefully as I can. Got lots of loose threads here. We gotta figure out. Yeah, I know people are probably like, why is this chick using glue to put her project together? This is just temporary basting. This is a replacement for pins. So instead of using, and that's the thing, this project is so long, I would have to use a ton of pins. And now I don't have to do that. So that's why this is, this doesn't take any more time than pinning the project and it's a lot easier. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm doing this. If you're new here and you're like, what the hell is she doing? I am using glue to keep my fabric in place. So that's what's going on. Okay. And this is gonna be our last piece we gotta do for this. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm so 
so congested today. I don't know what's going on. It's like allergies. It's like al my allergies are going insane. Okay. I think my husband might be home from work. I think that's I think that's him. We'll see. We'll see in a minute. Yeah, I think that's the garage door. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna have to redo this section because this, I feel like I could have done that edge a little bit better. We're gonna redo this. I'm just running a real thin line of glue within the seam allowance, which will be a quarter of an inch. Yeah, and this is this is actually a very beginner friendly project. So if you're new to sewing, this would be a great, this would actually be a really good first project if you're brand new. I feel like if you can figure out, and I do have some videos on the Sewing Reward channel on how to use a sewing machine. Uh, so you're welcome to check those out if you uh, don't know anything and you just want to learn how to operate the machine. I've got videos on that and then I, I really try to focus on beginner friendly projects in general uh, because my whole goal with the sewing report is to uh, encourage more people to try sewing. So a lot of my tutorials on the main channel and videos are aimed at begin like real beginners. So if that's you, don't be afraid. Jump in. It's a lot of fun. And these purse scarves, I think, would be a really pretty approachable project for someone who's super new. All right, let's get some lint roller out. Yeah, I have a. I also have a few videos I shot but never edited. I'm not. Yeah, I gotta. I gotta try to get those together. So I have a few videos that I worked on. I shot one of them. I'm like I wasn't wearing any makeup in it, so I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Um, but we'll see. All right, so let me move this pressing board. So now I need to cut the angle so that the scarves will be angled. So I need to cut those. So I need to basically clip the edges. So I'm going to be clipping. I'm going to be leaving this folded end as long as possible. So I'm going to be cutting the angles like this. And then I'm going to be cutting the other side this way as well. So it'll sort of be like a big trapezoid shape. That's basically what it'll be. All right, so let me get out my ruler. So I'm using this Creative Grids uh, square ruler. I like these rulers, They're not sponsored or anything. I like them because they have like these little grippy dots on the back, which really helps your fabric not slip away. All right, so in order to trim these, all you have to do is use the 45 degree angle line on the ruler, use that as your straight edge, and then it'll create an angle and you just need to trim this away. All right, so all I got to do is, yeah, here we go. And yeah, because this fabric does move a lot, you're gonna have to like kind of finagle. You can see like, yeah, see how like this fabric does have a lot of movement to it. Uh, so yeah, all you have to do is line this up, 45 degree angle is a straight line against the fold, and then trim this section off. And that's literally, and then you'll have some extra fabric you just need to get rid of. Uh, so now that that's just how you make the um, angled ends. So now you just have to do it the other on the other side. So that's really it. Sorry, I need some water. I might not talk as much just because I think my voice is starting to go. We'll see. Now let me get this ruler over here. Yeah, I love these. This is my favorite brand of ruler. I use these. I have this in like a few, quite a few different sizes and shapes. Like my rectangle one, the long one I have is great. 
So yeah, this is just how you're gonna, so really these scarves, okay. Something just happened with my little charger thingy there. So really the difference between, the only difference between the blunt, at, the blunt ends and the angled ends is just how you cut the ends. And that's really it. And then instead of sewing like this, you're just gonna sew at an angle here. So that's really it. So, all right, let me put this aside. And we just gotta cut all of these. Again, using the 45 degree line as <clears throat> your straight edge here. But yeah, see, isn't this easy? It's such a nice, I'm so glad I'm doing this project this week. It's pretty like, you know, it's kind of, you know, not too, you know, it's just, it's just more, this is more of a relaxing project. Okay, that didn't cut all the way. All right, let me get that again. So I just need to cut this. I might need to replace this blade soon. We'll see. All right. And see how there's like this little fuzz here? I'll just take my lint roller and that's an easy way to clean it up. So keep a lot of lint rollers in your sewing space. You will uh, not regret that. You're going to use the lint roller all the time. Okay. And again, it doesn't have to be like a thousand percent perfect. Okay, I need to go over this again. Didn't quite get the edge here. That's why this is such a good project because it is very forgiving, in my opinion. All right. So we got two down. Hello. All right, my husband is home from work. All right, so we got two of these guys. So we got three more to go. Let's get this cut. So we're just gonna repeat this, repeat this, uh, you know, a bunch of times. And that's really it. Yeah, I would definitely recommend if you are making this project, sew a few at a time. It'll be a lot more efficient. Well, like why, like that's the thing, if you're making these purse scarves, why not, why not sew like a few of them? Like if you're making one, you might as well make five, right? Like it doesn't take that much longer to do multiples. Uh, so this is a really good project for batch sewing. If that's what you're into, I like batch sewing personally. Um, I mean, if I'm making, I don't want to make like 87 of them at a time, but if I'm making like five at a time, that's usually pretty, pretty easy to do.
right, we're done with the rotary cutter for now. All right, let me just pop this guy back in. And we're done with the ruler for now. All right, so once I trimmed this, you can see there's still a little opening here. I'm gonna glue baste this closed as well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Let's bring back the pressing board. So we're gonna glue baste this. There we go. Get this all situated here. All right, so I'm just going to kind of learn this a couple hours ago. You can kind of do two at once. All right, so just, all right, here, I'll bring this a little close, a little more in so you can see. So I'm just gonna put a little glue on the inside of this and then press this shut. So basically just, yeah, stick a little glue here and a little glue here. All right, and then just take your iron and press this. Actually, we'll just sort of, we'll finger press it as well. So just, and yeah, because this is cut on the bias now, um, this is very prone to stretching out, so be careful with this. This is another reason why I'm glue basting this angled end, is because if I don't, this can get really, this can get really warped pretty easily. Uh, but now that I'm glue basting the angles, they, they'll stay, they'll stay intact more. All right, so we got one done. So I'm gonna do the rest, but I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Uh, so this is my marking for the opening. So I will not be sewing there. So for each side, I'm going to be starting here, sewing all the way down, sewing down here, back stitching at the beginning and end, and then I'm going to be sewing again on the other side, starting from the middle, down to the end, and then over at the angle. So instead of sewing this way, I'm just gonna be sewing at, at the angle. And that's pretty much it for this. Um, all right, so let's do the rest of these guys. Also, yeah, we definitely need the, this lint rollers. This lint roller is getting heavy use today, let me tell you. Let me get rid of one of these sheets here. We're just gonna close up the rest. Uh, so yeah, it feels pretty good. I'm getting rid of all this, uh, using up all of the fabric I cut. It feels really good. I can't tell. I can't tell you how good it feels. All right, so I'm gonna put these side by side. Use a little glue here. <clears throat> We're just gonna close it up. But yeah, glue basting will help keep this fabric from like stretching and warping. So that's one reason why I am uh, glue basting this, especially at this uh, angle here, because it is cut on the bias or on the diagonal. And any fabric that's cut on the bias uh, will have a little bit of stretch give to it. So a little bit of stretch to it. Ah, all right, got definitely getting some glue on my fingers. All right, that's fun, all right. All right, I just need to hit it with the iron. This will be glued shut now. See? Let's get the next one. Okay. Get a little glue in here. And this glue, just to be clear, this glue is just Elmer's washable school glue. So it's non-toxic, it will wash out, it will not hurt the fabric at all. So that's why I like using this glue. It really, uh, it will not harm the fabric and it's also not permanent. So you can, uh, you can take it out, it, like it will come out. 
So it's not like you're super gluing the fabric or anything like that. You don't have to worry about that kind of thing. All right, let's get this one all done. So I just have to press this. And the reason I'm hitting it with the dry iron is just so that the glue dries quickly. Uh, I'm just speeding up the drying process. That's really what I'm doing. And also I'm kind of, you know, pressing it also kind of helps it sit better too. Make it a little easier for you. All right, well, last one here. These will look really nice when they're done. Yeah, and then I think next time, I'll, yeah, I got to make a gift. I make, I have an idea for a gift, so I'm going to do, do that. And then we'll be making these in other colors as well. So we'll be definitely be doing more streams, making these scarves. Uh, and I'll be doing hopefully some different colors on next week. So we'll be doing that. So I'm basically just trying to stock up the Etsy shop with this. Uh, item in different different prints uh, just so I can have it available with a lot of different different stuff so that's really what's going on okay <clears throat> all right all right so we are good to go over to the sewing machine uh, so yeah we're going to be sewing basically everything except this little marked section here this is about two and a half inches so we're just going to be sewing here and then sewing here uh, with a quarter inch seam allowance so let's head to the sewing machine i know that's what you really t that's the thing like for any sewing project i feel like it's about maybe 10 percent maybe 15 i would say 15 for a lot of sewing projects it's like 15 percent of your time is actually at the sewing machine and then the other 85% is doing stuff associated with the project from uh, tracing, cutting out pieces, prepping pieces, and then doing like ironing and stuff like that. Uh, so I don't know, what do you think? What do you think that percentage is if you sew? Would you say like, but that's the thing, I feel like for a lot of projects, I spend about 15% of the time actually at the sewing machine sewing and the rest of the time is doing like other stuff. I don't know how you feel about that, but that's what I think. So, oh, and I'm accidentally recording on OBS, which I did not mean to do. All right, I accidentally hit, sometimes I accidentally, I, I accidentally hit buttons sometimes. All right, so let's go over to the sewing machine and then we will get this all sewn up here. All right, so I, again, I'm at the Juki DDL8700. This is an industrial uh, sewing machine. I really like it. Uh, so I got to check to, all right, I think my rabbit, I think she's in her box. Okay. I'm using a glide 40 weight thread. This type of thread is available in the Etsy shop as well, just not in this color. And I'm going to be doing a 2.75 stitch length and a quarter inch seam allowance. And I've got, I forgot what the needle, it's just like a standard, I think 90 over 14 needle. Uh, so nothing super special or anything like that. Okay, I could probably use a smaller needle, but you know, whatever. Okay, so, all right, let's get started here. And I'm gonna hold the threads for the first uh, couple, just so it doesn't get tangled up. And I am going to be backstitching at every start and stopping point. That's very important. 
Uh, if you don't do that, your stitches will pop out. They just will. So back stitching will lock your stitches so that they don't come out later, which is not really something you probably want. And I'm also using my fingers to guide the fabric. That also really helps. All right, I'm gonna trim the threads too. Let me just trim these. Ah, all right, I definitely have some glue on my fingers or something, I don't know. All right, so you're probably like, what do you do when you get to the corner, right? So here's the angle. So I'm gonna try my best to stop about a quarter of an inch away. All right, this looks about right. Keep my needle, needle down, pivot at a 45 degree angle, and then keep sewing the rest of the way, and that's it. This is literally it. And I also think that the glue basting, again, helps if I didn't glue baste, I think this fabric could easily just get stretched out under the presser foot. But because I glue basted, I think that's really helping that situation. All right, so let me back stitch. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the next piece, uh, but I'm just gonna leave this connected. We're sort of daisy chaining here. I'm gonna leave this connected and then just start the next piece here. We're just gonna do this for all of the pieces. So we have five scarves we're working on here. Okay. Again, back stitching. Okay. Close to the end. All right, let's see how this works out. Okay, that's about good. And I'm gonna trim this thread uh, now that I'm here. All right, just to get this separate, get these pieces separated. All right, trim this thread as well. I'm just gonna do this to all the pieces. All right, let's keep going here. Backstitch a few stitches. All right, let's go to the next one. And it's pretty much just, this is just how you sew kind of assembly line style here. All right. take my time to we'll trim this thread it's sort of getting in the way here all right trim these threads all right see I'm also going to trim I like to trim loose threads when I see them or like just stragglers just because they drive me crazy so we're going to do that Getting to the end here. I think about one more stitch. Yeah, let's see. Okay, that's pretty spot on there. All right, and then just sew off the edge here. Yeah. All 
Okay, that's about good. And again, these don't have to be like ridiculously perfect. So cut yourself some slack if, uh, you know, again, this is why it's a good beginner project because this is kind of a hard one to mess up. Like it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. This is a very like forgiving, it'll still look good even if you aren't doing everything like super perfect. So, you know, relax. Like this is one where you can sort of relax about. All right, oh, yeah, here we go. You can relax with this one a little bit more. All right, where are my lines? Okay, here it is. So don't be so hard on yourself with this one. All right, I'm gonna cut this. Do a few back stitching. Mm. All right, that's about good. All right. See, see, the, doing the angles isn't bad. It's don't be intimidated by angles. You can you can sew you can sew at an angle. It's okay. All right, so I'm gonna trim this off. Trim this guy too. Good. Okay. All right. Go. All right. So now we're going to sew the other side of all the pieces. So we did one side. I just have to do the other side now. That's not too bad. Let me just trim, again, trim these threads as you go. Trim the threads, trim your threads. All right, so now we're gonna do the other side of all of these pieces. <clears throat> side. All right. See, not too bad. This is, again, this is a very beginner friendly project. Oh, shoot. Ah, oh my gosh. I just clipped. All right. Well, I actually just clipped through my threads. All right, so here's what you do if you accidentally clip through. Yeah, I think I clipped 
I definitely clipped through the stitching. All right, so I'm gonna have to like redo this section. So here's what I'm going to do. This might be a good, I guess a good lesson, I suppose. Okay, so I accidentally clipped this section when I was trying to just clip the thread. See, I accidentally trimmed off this whole thing. Um, so I'm just gonna go through and redo this. Um, but I'm going to sew just on this left side. So that's what you do if you accidentally um, do what I just did and you accidentally uh, cut your, uh, yeah, this is what you do if you accidentally cut your, uh, cut, through, cut through your stitching, which is not ideal. All right, so I'm just gonna start a little beforehand and I'm just going to like sew just, just to the left of here. All right, so I'm just gonna sew another line, okay, right next to it. And it won't really, you won't really be able to tell. All right, so let's see how this looks now. All right, so that's what you can do. Okay, so see what I mean? So this was my original line of stitching here that I clipped into it, and I just sewed a line just to the side of it, and I backstitched. So that should be okay, I think. Um, so that's what you can do if you accidentally clip through your stitching, uh, like I just did, which was not what I intended to do. These snips are pretty sharp, so that's, yeah, that's what happened there. That totally happened, fun times. Uh, yeah, so just make sure not to do what I just did, and you'll be okay. But good lesson to learn um, that you can, like, you can fix this. So this should be okay now, you know, and I'm just going to still clip around here. Um, that point might be like a tad bulkier, but it won't be too bad. All right, so let me get another piece to sew on. Let's see here. Well, that was fun. Okay, so I think this, okay, so this one's totally done. So let me set this aside and get this piece here. All right, we're gonna get this guy. All right. Whew, that was a close one, huh? All right, backstitch. One more stitch. All right, yeah, this is perfect. Okay. All right, this should be okay. Let's see here. Yeah, that looks all right. See, I sewed, this angle's a little, little off, but it'll still, still be all right. So still be okay. Yeah. I just got to be careful. Yeah. I, I can't believe I accidentally clipped into that, uh, corner. That was not great. That was not great. <laughs> I can't believe I did that, but I did, you know, Hey, things happen in the sewing room, right? What happens in the sewing room stays in the sewing room. All right. Let's get this other side. Oh yeah. This needle needs to come up too. That would be good, right? Okay, so let me start about here. All right, so yeah, this is about a two and a half inch opening. Okay, let me backstitch. I think I'm gonna have a sandwich tonight. I think we'll do that. We'll have another sandwich. That'll be easy. Also, I have a bunch of bagels, so I'll have a bagel sandwich again. Also, I have some, you know, I have some bananas. I think I'll also have a banana, too. And I'll share it with the rabbit. The rabbit goes bananas for bananas. She loves bananas. Okay, so we got these two sides done. Okay. Let's finish this one up. Good. All right. All 
All right, one more done. All right. I think I only have two more to go. All right, two more. And then we can turn these right side out and finish these off. That'd be cool, right? We'll have more of these made. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. You know what? Here, my seat, you know, I might have to re... My seam allowance got, like, kind of off track here. Actually, it's not... All right. It's not too bad. All right. It's not too bad. All right. We'll just sort of get back on track here. Let's see how that... We'll, we'll see how this looks. Let me see how this looks here. Um, I'd be careful not, I'm being careful not to actually clip my threads, clip my uh, fabric here. Okay, so this one's done. Oh wait, this one is definitely done, I think, yeah. All right, yeah, I kind of went off a little off track on the seam allowance, but it doesn't look, see it's not, oh wait, this part, yeah, it's not too extreme, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be all right. We'll do it. I think it looks all right. All right. There we go. Back stitch a little bit. All right. Let's see here. All right. Yeah, it's not. It's not terrible. See this section I did. I did get a little off track with the seam allowance, um, but yeah, it's not, I think it, it's still okay. It's probably about an eighth of an inch, so it won't make like a, I don't think it'll make a huge difference. I think it'll be all right. We'll keep, we'll keep it as is. All right, just one more section here. Okay, um, and I am doing this. Okay, oh wait, let me get this thread under the presser foot here. Okay, one more to go. I'm trying to keep an eye on the fabric. All right, let me trim these threads real quick. Right, I'm move this aside. Yeah, I'm trying to keep a better eye on the uh, the seam mark line here on the needle plate. Kind of let that one get away from me. That's all right though. It'll be all right. See again, this is a very forgiving. Like you, it's really kind of hard to mess this one up. So, if you're looking for an easy project for a beginner, I think this is definitely a good a good bet for sure. Right, I need about one more stitch here. Okay, this should be good. Okay, yeah, this is perfect. All right, so now just, and I'm gonna also kind of, again, this angle can be a little, a little tricky, so I'm kind of keeping my finger on the fabric. Try not to sew my finger though, that would be good. All right, and that's it for now. All right, let's head back and get these turned right side out. All right, we got a bunch, we got five scarves in progress here. Check this out, check it out. Let's get back over. I'm gonna need my thread cup as well. All right, here's where we are now. We've got five inside out scarves. So, for each one, I'm going to, all right, let me get my iron on. For each one, here's my little opening for turning, and I'm going to kind of press this open to start with, and that'll help me later when I'm closing up that opening too. 
So I'm just going to take my iron and just sort of like, just sort of press this, like kind of force this fabric open a little bit and then press it a bit. So like this. So it'll kind of look like lips for a little bit. Like this will look like, here, let me put my picture and picture on. This will look like lips for a little bit, um, but this will really help later on. So this step, I would not skip it. It really does help. If you kind of already kind of train the fabric to fold this way, because you're gonna have to do that later. Okay, so let me do that. And we will start trimming all of the corners. So now I have to trim all of the corners and stuff. All right, so let's just take, and again, be careful not to clip into your stitching like I did earlier. Get close to it, but not clip into it. And then I'm also gonna clip this corner angle here. This will make for a much better, um, and the reason I'm clipping all of this is to reduce, when you turn this right side out, your seams will be kind of bunched in here. Um, so if I didn't clip this, there would be a lot of fabric in this little area here. Uh, so by clipping this away, it'll help that situation and it will give me a much nicer looking point or in corners. So that's why you do that. So let's just do that to all of these guys. And again, I'm being careful not to clip. You do not want to clip through your stitches. That would be a, again, a kind of a bad day there. All right, so I'm gonna clip right here. All right, let's do the next one. So I'm gonna do this for all of these guys. I'm gonna press this opening fabric open and then I'm going to clip all of the corners. So that's what's going on here. That is what's going on here. some of these guys. And if anybody has any questions or comments about the project, let me know in the chat and I'd be happy to try to answer if I can. All right, we're just clipping these corners now. All right, just a few more to go and then we can start turning these right side out and then we'll have five more scarves done and then we'll probably call it a night and then I have to cut more, I have to pre-cut more fabric for more scarves and then we'll make some more. 
Um, but yeah, the cutting part's kind of boring, so I kind of didn't want to do that on stream. But all of my pieces start off about five inches by 37 inches. And then the finished scarves end up being about uh, two inches wide by 36 inches long. And I find that to be a pretty good length and it's fairly versatile. Uh, so you can put it on your put it on your bag or you can wear it as a scarf. Uh, so there are a lot of things you can do with it with that length. You can also customize this to be a different length if you want or a different width. So this is not just limited to what I'm making. You can really uh, tailor this to whatever needs you may have. All right, let's get these cut here. All right. Such a cute fabric. I can't wait to get my other rayon in the mail that I ordered. I ordered a bunch of Rifle Paper Co. rayon. I think it's going to be so uh, pretty. I also ordered some more a canvas fabric for uh, zipper pouches and stuff. And uh, I, or I did order like a little bit of quilting cotton just because I really like the print. So I know I don't need, I definitely don't, like the purpose of me making stuff to sell is to get rid of fabric. I don't know if I'm accomplishing that. Like to, yeah, it's been kind of more of a fabric enabler, uh, you know, but hey, if I can cover the cost of the new fabric um, by using some of the fabric I have, cool. Uh, plus, I think the fabric I picked will be um, a pretty, it's very, it's pretty trendy looking. So I think that will be good for, um, what was I going to say, uh, good for selling just because the fabric I think is really on trend. Uh, with what's popular. All right, so this is the corner that I had to redo because I actually clipped through it. Um, this should actually be pretty good now because uh, there's a lot less bulk there. So I'm gonna cut this down even further. All right, so this is gonna be a very sharp point there. All right, let's cut here. And I need to press that open. And then we gotta turn all of this, this these scarves right side out. And that'll be fun, right? That'll be fun. Okay, we got one here. All right. <clears throat> All right, so I need to, pr I forgot to press this one open, so we gotta do that. Oh, let me trim this. I've got a loose thread here. Okay, let me put the scissors away momentarily. Yeah, these scissors are great. I do have these linked in the description box. These are Kai serrated scissors. And they've been working really nicely on lightweight and slippery fabrics. Uh, so the blade is a little bit more grippy because of that serrated, one of the, the edges is serrated. Uh, so that should help uh, keep your fabric from shifting underneath the scissors if you're working with uh, kind of trickier fabric. So I, so far I like them. They're not ridiculously expensive. Um, yeah, and they work pretty well. Not sponsored or anything, just a product I bought and liked. So wanted to recommend it. Also, the iron I'm using is a Panasonic cordless 360 iron. It's not my favorite iron. I did link that one in case anyone's interested. I'm just using a cordless iron because I thought this would look uh, the best on stream and not look so messy with the cord. So that's why I am using this iron, not because it's like my favorite iron or anything, but I've linked it in case anyone uh, sees, I, a lot of people have seen the iron and they're like, well, what iron is that? So I thought I would at least uh, be proactive and share that information right away. All right. All right, so now we can turn this project right side out. And I, let me get my chopstick back out. This is my helper, my helper for turning projects right side out and poking out corners. Um, so I'll start from the opening and then we'll just start pulling it through. Let me get some more water too. <clears throat> okay. All right, Denise, thank you for the comments. Uh, have you made or have any plans to make fabric containers, nesting baskets or notebook covers? Those are my project list along with fabric trays. A while ago, I did a video showing how to make the uh, By Annie Petty 4 basket. 
uh, fabric basket. So you're welcome to look at that video. I think it was called like, it was a video called something like, um, like my favorite like simple sewing projects or like easy sewing projects. That was a really nice uh, pattern and I think the project came together really nicely. The finished item looked really cool. So that was called the By Annie Petty Four Fabric Baskets, I believe. Uh, but I do have a previous video showing that. I have not done notebook covers. I'm trying to think. I also did, I did do a video a long time ago, uh, like years ago, where I took those paper mache fabric, like the paper mache trays, and then I decoupaged fabric on it. So that might be another one you might like, Denise. Denise, you also uh, love Kai scissors, easy on the hands and comfortable to use. Yeah, they're really nice. And I find uh, the price of the Kai scissors seems to be pretty reasonable. It's not like super, uh, the price of them isn't super crazy. So yeah, so far I like the brand Kai. I, is that Jap? I think it's like Japanese or something. All right, so now we've got this mostly turned right side out on one side. I'm gonna try to poke out the corners and see how my points look. Again, be very gentle. You do not want to be, okay, yeah, these points look, all right, this point looks really nice. Okay, be gentle. You do not want to poke, you definitely do not want to poke through these stitches here. Uh, so again, at these corners, yeah, be very, very gentle and don't, like don't force things too much. Okay, here we go. This is about as good as my point will be. I think that's, oh, actually, yeah, here we go. This is a really nice point here. All right, beautiful point here. All right, let's do the other side. Yeah, this looks great. This point looks really nice, okay. Nice, nice points here. Points for points, right? Points for points. Let's turn this other side, right side out. Yeah, I'm so congested today. I, I think I'm gonna make a sandwich later for dinner. We'll chill out, hang with the rabbit. My husband's gaming. I can definitely hear him like talking to people or something. I don't, I don't know how that works. Uh, I guess I'm talking to people too. Um, I'm just not gaming. I'm, I mean, I'm doing something. I'm just not playing a video game or anything. I'm not really into video games. We're almost to the end of this point. I gotta press this out real well. Okay. All right, so let me take the chopstick again. Where's the opening here? Ah, where? Oh, here it is. No? Where did it go? See, now it's hard to find the opening. Okay, here's the opening. All right. Let's see how this point can turn out. I feel like these are going fairly fast. All right, oh, nice. All right, this is a beautiful point here. All right, let me just. All right, yeah, this is looking, this point's looking very nice. Okay, and notice again, I'm not like, I'm not like being too forceful at the point. I'm being pretty. All right. I'm being pretty um, gentle with it. There you go, because you don't, you really don't want to poke through these stitches. That would be uh, not fun. All right, and yeah, this is my other corner. This looks great. Okay. Wish I had something a little skinnier to poke this out with. That's still blunt, but I don't really have anything. So, you know, I have this all with the cover on it, but this is actually, I checked it out and this uh, chopstick point here is actually um, like better. So, although I do have another, I have another chopstick somewhere with them. Um, actually, let me try a pencil. We'll try this, uh, this pencil. This is kind of, this might be good. All right, let's do this pencil. Let's try that. And that's on the inside, so it won't really, like if it gets a mark on it, it obviously won't be visible. Let's try that out and see what happens. Um, all right, here we go. Let me just try that. Because my other side point is really nice. 
Okay, so let's try that real quick. Yeah, didn't really make, all right, yeah, that doesn't really make, really doesn't make too much of a difference here. All right, I think that's about as good as we're gonna get. Yeah, the pencil's not really, pencil's not really doing much. All right, we're gonna take the pencil out. All right, so now let's press this. <clears throat> Okay, so you see how like this, we've got like a tube now, but it's sort of like a shapeless blob, you know? So I'm gonna use my fingers and sort of press the fabric away from the seam very gently. So I'm just trying to do this to sort of get the party started here. All right, and then I will be pressing on the side but you see, since I already pressed the fabric away from the stitching, it should make it a little easier to press this way now. See, since I already kind of did the hard work here, this should be pretty, there we go. Yeah, look how nice this looks. Yes, yeah, look at, actually, I would say these angled scarves, I think they're a little bit faster to press for some reason than the blunt end ones. I don't know why, but this one does seem a little bit easier to press. Okay. All right. So here's one end. Yeah, look how nice this looks. This looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Let's do the other side. I think we do the same thing. I'm kind of pressing the fabric uh, with my fingers away from the seam. So kind of roll it away with your fingers. All right. So see now when you go to, oh, and I got a loose thread, I need to kind of tuck in or trim. I'm not sure. Oh wait, actually, does this come out? I don't know. We'll see. All right. So see now when you go to press it this way, it's again, it's much easier since you've already pressed that seam in the middle. Okay. Let's see, this is looking pretty good. Oh, and I got to pop that this corner kind of got popped back in. All right, see, so see how I'm like rolling this with my fingers? This re honestly really helps. So if you're having trouble pressing, do that. All right, yeah, this is looking pretty nice here. And I got a hot iron here. All right, where is my, so you see, this is how it should look. You shouldn't even really be able to tell where your opening is. Like if you can't, that's a good thing. Like. The opening for turning should be pretty uh, hard, like ha kind of hard to find. All right, so here it is. All right, I need to trim a little thread there. Let me get my scissors. Okay. So I'm just gonna trim this tiny thread here. So I'm using these uh, bent curved scissors, which I sell in the Sewing Report Etsy shop, another plug here. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to, all right, mark where, so my opening is like from here to here. So I'm gonna place a mark with this marking pen where I need to sew. So I need to sew about from here to here. This will kind of disappear. I'm gonna need to make the mark again because the iron, as I've found out, um, the iron seems to be, this marking pen seems to be a uh, heat soluble uh, so it, it does disappear when I iron it, but I just need to know where I put the glue. All right, actually, you know what? This will probably kind of stay. Let me just sort of hit it with the tip of the iron so it doesn't really get onto the marking. Okay, yeah, that definitely disappeared, so I'm going to need to do this again. But see, the mark kind of disappears with the iron. All right, so I just need to make that mark again. And this is just where I'm, so I need to sew up this opening from here to here over at the sewing machine as close to the edge here as possible. So I'm gonna try to put the stitches very close to the edge uh, so that it doesn't really get in the way of the scarf too much. All right, 
So here's my marks. All right, so I'm gonna make that. Let's work on the next scarf. All right, my hair is like very out there today. We'll see. Let's work on another one. All right, so these marks should stay. I'm gonna leave this like this. <clears throat> All right, so let's work on the next scarf. Just have to start turning these. So again, this is something you can do, like you can watch TV or like listen to a podcast or listen to music uh, while you're doing this. This is just kind of a like a mindless activity. Uh, you can chat with the internet. Um, so this is kind of a nice thing to do all, you know, do a few of them at once, you know, and just sort of make, make a day of it. Make a, you know, have a good time. Relax. This isn't super taxing, so that's kind of nice. Just sort of a nice, like, kind of meant, it, this is sort of like a mentally uh, low effort activity. Okay, so we're getting close to the end here. Yeah, here we go. So let me poke this out. All right, so we're gonna poke out this corner here. Okay. Ah. So that's one corner. Now we got the pointy corner here. All right, yeah, let's see how good we can get this point. Actually, this looks pretty freaking good so far. I think this is not looking too bad. All right, I'm gonna point it again. Be gentle and don't be too, don't put too much pressure on this because your stitches could pop and then you'll have to try to fix it. And that's not, that's not gonna be very much fun. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, I think the angled ones are a little easier for me to press. I'm not really sure why. They're not taking as long as the, uh, they're really not taking as long as the blunt end ones. I'm not really sure why that is. All right, here's the point here. Yeah, and that's really because there is still a little bit of bulk in this thing. So I'm trying to press that out the best I can, but this is about, this is about the, the best we're going to get it. So that's fine. All right, now we got to do the other side. All right, here we go. All And we've been live for about five hours. I need to change my microphone uh, pack soon. Uh, so we're gonna need to do that. Uh, let me just, all right, actually we might do that real quick. All right, since we, all right, we're gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna might mute my microphone for like a second. Let me just make sure my audio is still working. All right, yeah, my audio is still good. I just need to change out. These microphone packs last about five and a half hours. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it now. All right, let me put it on camera two. I'll put on some music momentarily. We'll put on some music just for a few minutes while I mute myself and uh, change this.
hopefully everyone can hear me now. Let me, all right. Yeah, it looks like my microphone's okay. In the chat, let me know if there's audio issues, but I just switched out the microphone pack and I think it's okay. I think, we'll see. I'm not 100% sure, but you know, hey, it's all good. All right, let's turn off the music now. All right, no more music. No more music. Let's put the comments back on here. All right, let's continue with these scarves. All right, we're turning these right side out. We've already sewn them, so this is what the um, this is what they look like inside out after I've sewn them, and I left a little spot in the center for uh, turning the project right side out, and then we'll be um, pressing these and sewing up the opening, and that's it. That's really it. Uh, so I've made about if I can finish these, I will have made eleven scarves in like. You know, I don't know how long this will take, like seven hours or something. So that's not too bad, really. It's really not bad. So we'll have to see what what we end up with time-wise. I'm curious. But these angled scarves don't, for some reason, they just don't seem to be taking me as long uh, to press. I have no idea why that is. The other ones, for some reason, just took longer to press. These are not taking as long. I'm not really sure why that is. I would think these would be harder. So that's like the weird, that's kind of the weird thing about this. All right, though, this point's looking really good. Some of the points look better than others. Um, so we'll see. We will see. All right, here's my one corner. All right, so here's the angled. Um, but yeah, the only difference between these scarves and the blunt end ones is, again, just the shape of the ends. That's literally it. Uh, so I just cut them differently. All right, so we got both of these ends. Let's press this. All right, we're gonna press these. All right, so here is my opening. Yeah, I left a pretty small opening and that seemed to work out fine. So you can do two inches or even like, yeah, two inches is, is plenty. I didn't really have trouble. I really didn't have trouble turning these. So the two inches seems to be fine. All right. By the way, shout out to the eight people watching on Rumble. Uh, that's actually more than YouTube and Twitch. So, hey, cool for you guys. Thank you. Leave, yeah, ch leave me a chat or a comment if you're watching on Rumble. I'm just curious to know uh, who is watching this on Rumble. I have no idea. I literally have no idea. But I'm just curious to know um, kind of how you found this channel and like, you know, what, you know, what you think about this, uh, this format of live stream. Let me know. All right, um, okay, so I'm pressing this side. Yeah, these angled ones, these seem to be, for some reason, pressing out faster. Um, I seem to be able to make the angled ones quicker, which makes no sense. It should take about the same amount of time, but for some reason, these are quicker. I have no, I honestly don't know why. So, all right. So I'm kind of rolling, yeah, so, so you see I'm sort of rolling out the fabric with my fingers here, and this seems to be helping quite a bit. Okay, so we've got this guy. All right. Yeah, this is going pretty, like these angled ones are going like fat, way faster. I don't know why. Not, I have no, I honestly don't know. Okay, so we're going to press this. Yeah, this is this is working out pretty okay. Let me press this pretty. Put a little pressure on here. Yeah, look at these nice nice points here. Let's do the other side. Yeah, and you really can't see the opening, so that's good. Yeah, I think the opening's like here. Okay, here's the opening. Yeah, you really can't see it. Might have to trim this loose thread here, but we'll do that. A shout out to everybody watching. I really appreciate everything. Hit that like button, subscribe or follow. I know different platforms have follow versus subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to be everywhere, guys. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report and I'm, I'm gonna be sewing live as much as I can in 2023. Right, I'm gonna try to, again, take this I'm going to take the iron and press this 
Yeah, this seems to be really helping if you sort of put the seam in the middle first, sort of press it out and it helps because then when you go to press, when you go to press with the seam on the edge, your fabric has already been kind of like opened up, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes any sense, uh, but it makes sense to me. So that's, that's cool, right? All right. We're gonna pop, oh yeah, this corner sort of got a little pop back in. All right, so we just have to press this back out. There we go. All right. Guys, we're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere with these scarves. All right, so over the next couple days, I'm gonna be photographing these and trying to list these in the shop. Um, and we're also going to be, uh, I need to take some product, I need to take some nice like product photos. So that's on the agenda. Let's see here. All right, so where is my opening? Okay, so here's the opening. Yeah, this actually looks pretty good so far. Let me just check the other side. So see, you want the opening to really blend in with the rest of the uh, stitches, like the stitch line. This looks pretty good. So I think I, all I have to do is, I think all I have to do is glue base this and then mark my start and stopping points and I should be okay. But yeah, look how nice, like this looks very neat. You can't really see the opening and that's what you want. You don't really want to be able to tell if you can't tell where the opening is, you're doing the right thing. Okay, where is the opening? Okay, here we go. So I need to stitch from about here. So about right here to about right here, okay. I'm gonna make a very clear dot here and then put some glue here. And I don't think I'm gonna press it. I'm gonna let this sort of air dry while I'm working on the other ones. Plus, since I just uh, since I just pressed this area, it sh the glue should hold like the 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 heat, the warmth from the iron should kind of hold this already. The reason I don't want to iron this again is because the heat definitely is erasing the marks. Uh, see what I mean? So I don't want to have to keep redoing it. So. All right, we're just gonna do this. We also definitely have a loose thread there that I gotta deal with. All right, so I want this to be very, this dot to be very visible. Okay, let me, yeah, we got a loose thread we can pull out here. Here we go. Let me just pull this guy out. Let's see, um, yeah, and that's the thing. If you're selling these, you really want your Pay close attention to the details of your finishes. Um, again, you don't want a bunch of loose threads hanging out, especially if you're charging people quite a bit of money for your item. You want the item to look as professional and neat as possible. I put a little more on here. Okay, yeah, this looks pretty good. Okay, so we got these two done. And then we'll just, all we'll be doing at the sewing machine is stitching from here to here edge stitching and then we're done. So that's not too, again, that's, this is a very like quick project, which is why I'm doing it. All right, let's get this going on. All right, hello, all right, you, you can see me now too. Yeah, I didn't realize I had it on camera too for like ever, um, but yeah, I did. Now, now you get both. You get to see me and you get to see what I'm doing. Cause we've got, Three cam we got three cameras here at the sewing report. Yeah, I don't know why, but these are definitely fat. These are ending up being faster than the other kind. No idea why, they just are. Okay, let's 
poke this out. My hair is crazy today. Yeah. I even used hairspray today. It's just kind of going wild. All right. Let's poke out these. All right. Oh, this corner is going to look... This, this point is looking really nice. Okay, this is a beautiful one. Again, they're all a little bit different, but that's okay too. Here's the other corner. All right, so see, here's the like, kind of the gentler angled corner. That one looks pretty nice too. Let's get the other side. Oops. Having trouble here. What is going on? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. All right. Where is the opening? Oh, here. Okay, oh, this is a nice point here. There we go, all right, being careful. Again, I'm being pretty gentle to not uh, poke out the stitches. Don't want that to happen, that would be not great. All right, let's get this out. Where is the opening here? Oh, here it is. All right, now it's time to press this. So you see, like, this looks very, like, this doesn't look great until you press it. I'm not going to lie. You, it's going to look way better once you do all that stuff. All right, so we're just going to, and we got a loose thread here. Got to contend with. All right, so, so what I'm doing is basically just like using my finger and just sort of gently pressing the fabric away from the seam. Keep doing that. Do it on the other side too. Okay. All right, and then, ah, it's a hard time getting into the base here. My iron. All right, and now, press it this way. Ah. Okay. I'm going to press this all the way down. You see how nicely these are coming together? Once you press them, they look really professional and really beautiful. It's just until you press them, it's kind of hard to tell. Like, they don't really look like much until you press them. That's why the pressing is so important in sewing and quilting. You're going to get just much better results if you take your time uh, to press things properly. So that's one of my biggest tips for newcomers to sewing and quilting is press, 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 and press. More pressing. And your project will look project or quilt will look much nicer. Yeah, see how nice this looks? 
beautiful. Let's do the other side. All right. Got this guy going on here. All right, here's my opening. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to need to kind of press this in a little bit more. It'll be all right. All right, it's looking pretty even here. Just sort of press this. Okay. I think this is, yeah, this, this, my opening looks pretty good so far. All right, yeah, these, I don't know why these are just, these are pressing out faster. I have no idea why. This is not making any sense to me. Let me just press this out a little bit. Press the other side. I'm kind of rolling this with my fingers. All right, oh, I need to pop that corner kind of got popped back in. So I need to poke that out again. Yeah, I need to kind of pop this out. There we go. Yeah, somehow this got, got away. All right, there we go, see? There we go. Now it's looking. Let me press this. Do I need to poke this out again? Yeah, I do. All right, let's poke this out. See, this one got a little wonky. All right, where is my opening? Here we go. So I need to poke this part out again. See this part? Yeah. Yeah, this definitely needs to be popped out. Okay. Press this part. There we go. Okay, that's looking better, maybe, I think. Yeah. There we go. Press this side. Yeah, this definitely needs to be. This has to be kind of reshaping here. See, this edge also needs to be rolled out a little bit too. Let me just take my, there we go, take my iron. And again, I need to sort of roll, roll this away with your fingers. There we go. You really want a very crisp edge here. And right now this is a little, this is a little too poofy for me. All right, so just keep pressing. Okay, that looks a little bit better. I think it could be improved, but let me just try to, there we go, yeah. All right, let me just take, so I'm just gonna take my iron and sort of press this away from itself. There we go. And I'll press this again. There we go. Yeah, this is looking a little bit better. All right. All right, yeah, that's better. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with this. All right, so now here's my opening. All right, I also need to tuck these threads back in. Um, this looks pretty good overall. Let me try to figure out what I gotta do here. All right, let me check the fabric to make sure it's, um, there's a good amount on the inside and there is. Okay, let me just take some glue and then we're just gonna close this up and then I'm gonna mark where I need to sew from just to give me a good reference point. Okay. And because I just pressed this area, the heat that was just from the iron should help this glue to dry pretty fast. So I don't really think I need to press this again. I just need to figure out where I'm sewing from and I'm sewing from about here. Okay, so about here to about here. Okay. So pretty. And then there is a loose thread I just need to clip here. 
So you just to clip this guy here. All right, should be good. All right, now I'm definitely gonna need to mark this again. Yeah, this didn't really, it didn't really, I think it's because this area is warm. So I need to wait for it to, like the mark on the pen works better on like cool fabric, but when the fabric is really warm, it seems to be disappearing. So I just need to, here we go. We're just gonna mark this up pretty good. All right, that should be okay for now. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. All right, fun times, huh? Fun times. Okay. into the fabric? I don't think so. I think it's okay. Got a little thread here. There's a tiny bit of fiber here. I'm going to try to clip this off. Roller. All right, oh, that's a nice point there. Beautiful here. All right, that's a good one. Hook out this other side. Let's see here. Okay. This look really nice. See if I can get that corner just a little bit more. I don't know if I will be. Get that point. I'm gonna try it again though. All right, actually, yeah. All right, I can get a little bit more. All right, and again, I'm not pushing super hard, being still very gentle. Time to do this side.
All right, let's try to press this out now. Put this, tuck this loose, loose threads back in here. So I'm going to start off with these in the middle. Ah, it's not getting into the base. Press this out. Um, all right, here's my opening. I'm just gonna base the shot in a minute. But yeah, this one, this these lines look beautiful. Like you can't really tell where the opening is, and that's what you want. All right, so let me put some glue here. All right, so this is a pretty small one too. Okay, Get some glue. Okay. About right here. Okay. I'm just going to let this sort of air dry. I'm also going to mark where I need to sew. It's about right here. So this is about three inches. This one's a little, a little bit of a longer opening. That's okay too. You just mark real good with this pen. Making sure I can see everything. All right, last one, and then we can head back over to the sewing machine and close up all of these scarves, and then we will be done with these. So we just have a, one more to turn right side out. <clears throat>
ready to poke the, out these uh, points. Let's get the chopstick in here. Okay, got that one. All right, let's see how this point turns out. All right, this one I think will look okay. All right, that's not bad. All right, that's pretty, pretty pointy there. Okay. All right, let's press this, and then we'll be good to go. All right. Yeah, I don't know why these seem to be easier to press than the uh, the blunt ends. I that doesn't make any sense, and it shouldn't really shouldn't take longer or you know whatever. Uh, but these are just going along a lot faster and I don't really like I really don't know why yeah it's not taking me as long to make these as it did to make the other ones which is like kind of weird I don't know oh wait, actually maybe it is yeah it took me about three hours to make uh, six and it's taking me about three hours to make five um, yeah I don't know maybe I'm crazy who knows um, see I'm making less uh, because I you know I'm using basically what I have so yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, these seem to be, for some reason, these seem to be faster to press at the end. I'm, which again makes, doesn't make a lot of sense. But for some reason, it's faster. Let's press these. get the lint roller again. My lint roller is taking a beating today. Check this out. Let's toss this guy. We're just gonna do a quick, all right, clean up there. All right, so we got one side pressed. All right, here's the opening. All right, yeah. This is looking pretty okay. Um, all right, so I just need to do the same thing with this side and sort of press this out from each other. So you see, I'm sort of using my fingers and I'm pressing the fabric away from the seam. And then I'm sort of, all right. So you see what I'm doing? Like for some reason, this, this just makes it a lot easier because the fabric is already kind of been trained to press away from the seam uh, so it seems to be pressing out a little easier when I do that so I don't know if that's a tip or something you can use but that's what I'm learning from doing a bunch of these okay let's pull this out a little bit all right there you go all right so now I'm going to and again I'm using my fingers a lot to sort of roll things away from the seam, to roll that fabric away. That's what you want to do. All right. This fabric is pressing out really nicely. Okay. So, all right, here is my opening. And that actually looks pretty, again, I shouldn't have to do, really shouldn't have to do too much. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna put some glue here. See, I just need, so see, here's the opening. I just need to glue base this shut and then sew this shut. And that's, that's pretty much it. So that's not too bad at all. Let's so just put some glue in here. And the heat from the iron is really kind of helping this to dry pretty fast. All right, so I just need to, here we go. Right, so I need to sew from about here. I don't mark this with the pink pen because it's on the white part of the fabric. So I need to sew from about here to, let's see here. Here to about here. Okay, actually I can use the pink pen again because this is also on um, like the lighter part of the fabric. Oh, so, so now I just need to sew from here to here and that's it. Let me just press this again. And since I used the pink pen, this does not wipe away with the iron. So that should stay a little bit better. Let me just mark this again. 
just for good measure. All right, so now we can go over to the sewing machine. And the last step, now that we've got these turned right side out, is there's this little opening here. I've already glue basted it shut. I just need to sew this opening permanently closed. So I've already marked where I need to sew from. You do need to back stitch at either side so your stitches don't pop out and just do these for all of your scarves. All right, let's head over and that's literally the last thing we gotta do tonight. All right. Hopefully this bobbing doesn't give me any issues. All right, I think the rabbit is still in her box. She's just chilling. Oh, and I need my thread catcher cup. I need my thread cup there. Let me just grab that. All right. All right, and I'm gonna, I'm going to increase the stitch length to about three for this. So just a tiny bit. We did 2.75 the last time. I'm gonna do three and see what happens. Uh, so because I've already marked where I need to sew from, this gives me a really good visual reminder. Again, make sure to sew as close to the edge as you can. And you do want to back stitch a little bit. Here we go, you see? There we go. So I'm just going to sew. Where is the line? Okay. So again, backstitch. And I'm going to hold these threads so that they don't get tangled up. All right. A little bit of backstitching. All right. And then stitch down to the other mark. And then back stitch again. All right. And then move on to the next, uh, the next scarf. Um, and I'm gonna trim these threads a little bit as I go. But you see, I sewed really close to the edge because I, I want these stitches to be pretty inconspicuous. And I feel like in this position they are now I'm just going to trim some through some of these threads. We'll trim the rest later. I just want to trim a few now. We'll trim the rest back at the table. Uh, but because this is close to the, very close to the edge, the, these won't be very, like, these are pretty discreet stitches. So I feel pretty okay about these. Again, I could hand sew the opening closed. But I think the time invested in doing that, I just don't, I don't think it's worth it, frankly. Uh, so we're gonna go with the machine stitched option instead. Okay, so, all right, we got this guy. All right, and I'm, oh wait, I'm starting at the wrong, see, this is why I'm glad I got the marks. I, I'm starting at the wrong mark here. So that's why I marked both sides, okay. All right, do a little back stitching. All right, and I'm just, I'm really trying to stay pretty close to this edge of the fabric. All right, a little bit of back stitching. All right, on to the next one. Okay, and see these are all attached, but we're just gonna be trimming the thread later anyways, so it's fine. All right, let's move on to the next guy. And we're basically just, yeah, closing up this opening and making sure that uh, this is all nice and tight. And that's it, keeping it tight there, right? Let's get the next one. Okay, this is the one I marked with the pink pen because both areas were on a colored, a lighter colored piece of the fabric. So it should be fine. All right, back stitch. All right. Now I'm keeping this real close to the edge. I also don't really want the stitches to be real, 
Um, like if you if they're in further, I feel like that's going to impact how the scarf feels as well. So again, I want these to be pretty, uh, you know, unnoticeable. So is so that's why I'm sewing so close to the edge here. All right, two more to go, and then we are done. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, maybe later tonight I'll, well, I need to keep editing the video version of this, uh, but I do need to cut some more uh, rayon and then make some more of these guys in different colors. And I also need to take like product photos and do the listings and stuff. But I, maybe I wanna, ha I kinda wanna have like a few different colors off the bat instead of just like one. All right, another one down, one more stitch. All right. Back stitch. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, guys, hopefully no bobbin issues. All right, one more to go. Got my little visible lines here, visible marks here, which is good. All right. Do a couple back stitches. All right, again, real close to the edge. I'm keep using my fingers to sort of keep everything in place. All right, sewing just to that mark, back stitch. All right, front stitch, okay, and that's it. Guys, we've got, got more scarves now. All right, let me make sure it didn't snag on the feed dogs. I think it's okay. I also really, I think when I do this quilt, I'm, I'm going to use the walking foot on here, but I need to, I need to oil the walking foot and then get everything sort of cleaned out. All right, so that's it. All right, let's get back and trim up the threads and then we are done. We're done. That's literally it. Let me put this guy in here. All right, so we have made 11 scarves in like a few hours. That's not, it's really not too bad, right? All right, let me just get my hair out of my face here. Wow. Okay, so the last thing I just have to do is uh, trim these, like just clip these threads because all of these scarves are attached to each other. Uh, so I just need to, all right, trim all the threads. And I'm using, again, my handy dandy curved bent handle scissors available in the Sewing Report Etsy shop. And they're very good for cutting close to, but not into your fabrics. So that's why I really like these. All right. And then the other thing I will do is um, I'm gonna take some water and just get rid of, use this to get rid of the uh, the marks from the marking pens. Just get a little dab of water here. And then that will like get rid of the marks. All right, let's trim all these, clip all the threads. Okay. Yeah, I love these scissors because you can literally get right close to the project, uh, but you don't have to worry too much about accidentally cutting the fabric or anything you don't want to cut. So that's the good thing about these guys. Okay. All right, let's get some water on here. We're just going to dab a little water on all these marks and then I'm going to, I'm going to iron this and that should completely get rid of all the, uh, the marks from your marking pens. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, trim these up. Yeah, look at, it took less, so it took less than three hours, plus we took a little bit of a break too. Uh, so really it was about five and a half, I would say about five and a half hours if we minus um, chit chat from this live stream and my little like restroom water break. I'll put us at, I'll put us at five and a half hours, like in actual making time. Because again, we did have like some announcements and stuff like that. So not everything was like pure making. 
So I think I'll round down, we'll say five and a half hours for these 11 uh, scarves. Okay, yeah, but look at, you can bear it, you really can't see. These stitches are really not very visible. I think for the average person, this would not be a deal breaker for them that it's not hand stitched, closed. Plus the hand stitching would, like it would take, like in, it would take longer than I want to for this project. Okay, let's get this clipped off. Yes, yeah, so we just have a few more threads here. Notice I'm being careful not to trim into the fabric. Being careful here. Yeah, I really like these scissors. These are available in the shop. Got a few pairs left. I can reorder more, hopefully. They are a pretty popular item in the shop, too. Okay, so let's get some water on this guy. Again, I'm just trying to basically just get rid of this mark from the marking pen. And that's pretty much it. All right, one more to go. You can see these little thread tails here. Okay. But yeah, this one was good as far as sewing. So again, I'm sewing so close to the um, edge here that again, it doesn't it doesn't really change the feel of the scarf too much by doing that. So I'm glad I did that. All right. All right. So we got to dab a little water in here. All right, let me go back and I'm going to press, I'm going to put a little heat on all of these. All right. Put a little heat on these guys. Where are the marks here? Okay, so here are the marks. Get a little water on, a little more water in here. But this is how you can pretty easily remove the marks from here. There we go. Once you iron, it should definitely, yeah, get rid of these. Here we go. Ah, the iron needs to heat up a little bit. It's still heating up. for it to heat up just a little bit more. We'll get another one ready too. Okay, you hear the marks. Uh, see, you can barely see them now and when I iron, they should completely disappear pretty much. All right, it's still heating up a little bit. How's everybody doing? I know it's almost eight o'clock Eastern time. Uh, we've been alive for almost six hours. We're just chilling and sewing. All right, yeah, here we go. This is, yeah, the, I'm glad this marker, marking pen is heat soluble. I know it's kind of a pain in the butt, but at least it's nice to know I can easily get rid of these marks. Here we go. Okay. All right here. Yeah, they're pretty much gone. Let me just get a little more water in this guy. Okay, and just hit it with the iron. All right, yeah, that's that's pretty much gone. All right, a couple more here. All right, I right hear the marks. Yeah, these are pretty much gone already, so that's good. All right, so that one's done. And you see how easy, easily and nicely this rayon presses. So again, if you're, as you're using it, like if you get wrinkles in it from tying it in a knot or in a bow, all you have to do is press it again. I would use like medium heat, probably not high heat all the time. Use medium heat and they press out perfectly again, very easily. Uh, so again, I know with like the everyday like usage, things can get a little wrinkled, but you can easily press these and they'll look as good as new again. But yeah, I, I would also recommend hand washing these and not throwing them in the washing machine with all your other stuff. 
I would, if you can, hand wash them and then uh, lay flat to dry and then press them. And that should keep them staying nice looking longer. All right, we're gonna iron this. Yeah, this looks beautiful. All right, we're just gonna press this guy. All right, and I think one more. One more to go. All right, oh, and this is the one, oh, this is the one where I did the pink marker on. So let me just get some water. Yeah, this is pretty much gone already. Just need a little more water here. Because this is the water soluble pen, so this one goes away with water. Okay. All right, so now we have, uh, we've made 11 scarves today. I can't believe that. Okay, so let's tally these up. So we got one, two, three, four, five. All right, so we have made five of the angled end per scarves, and then we made six of the blunt end per scarves. Uh, so we've got quite a few now. All right, so we did 11 total. Let me tally this up. Okay, so we did five and a half hours divided by 11, 11 scarves. Okay, so let's do that. So 5.5 divided by 11. So on average, it took is that right? A half an hour? Okay, on average, it took about a half an hour uh, per scarf. Uh, so that's actually really not bad. Is that right? Let's see, 11, eight. Yeah, five and a half hours divided by 11. Yeah, okay, so 0.5 times, wait, let's see, 0.5 times 5.5. Wait, what the heck? Wait, so 0.5 times... 11 equals five point. Okay, so each scarf took about a half an hour. Uh, so if I am, so if I can make two scarves an hour and I'm, I'm doing the math for Etsy, say I'm doing $19 per scarf times two, so that's $38 per hour. That's much better than those noodle head pedal pouches where I was charging $45 for five hours. This is $38 for one hour. So that's a lot better in terms of uh, making to sell in, in factoring in the time of making something. Uh, so this is actually a pretty good project in terms of, again, selling because, again, I'm, I'm using a five inch strip of fabric, but again, I have no interfacing costs. I have no hardware, I have no zippers. Um, this is a fairly simple project. All I needed was a fabric and thread and you know, of course my regular sewing supplies. So I think this is definitely a much better item in terms of sewing to sell or making to sell. I don't, I don't know how much my, fa I'll have to figure out how much my fabric cost is, cause that could be, yeah, it's a little, little trickier, uh, but the fabric is 36 inch. I could probably do like square inches. Maybe I could do that with the fabric. So I'm going to cost this out and try to figure out my materials cost. The thread is pretty like nominal. I'll say like, you know, like what, like 10 cents, 10 cents for thread, for thread per a uh, scarf. You know, it took me about a half. So say my, all right, so let's say I'm charging $19. All right, so let's say I'm doing two scarves and I'm trying to figure out per hour how much I'm making. Okay, so $38. Let's say for two scarves, my fabric costs is, Let's say, we'll set, let's say $5. So we're gonna be very like conservative there. So let's say, five, like, let's say the cost of my materials is, I'll say $6 uh, per scarf. So let's, let's say, well, let's say $10 for both scarves. I think that's pretty safe. And I'm also counting like the, the packaging I'm buying and like the shipping supplies. So let's say $10 for two scarves. Uh, so let's minus 10. So that's $28 for, 
for labor per hour, that's a much better uh, calculation in terms of money and, you know, paying yourself fairly. So I think this is actually a pretty good project uh, for sewing to sell because, you know, again, this is much better than like the $5 an hour for the pouches. Uh, so overall, I think this project is more of a winner if you are looking to do like craft fairs or selling on Etsy or selling online, like on a Facebook group or, you know, whatever. Uh, so at this point I have, let's see, so I've got five, I think I have about 11 of the angled scarves. Let's see, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, so I've got 11 of these angled scarves. Um, and then I have, I think I have like seven, I think I have seven of the blunt ends. So I need to make a few more of the blunt end scarves. Um, I could probably make a few more of the angled scarves. I, you know, if you guys think the angled ones will sell better, I would probably make more of those. Uh, so at this point, I've got seven of these guys. I've got enough to, you know, and I also have the samples I sewed for this bag. So here, let me show you this. So I have this bag that I've been using. Um, so I sewed one angled scarf and I sewed one blunt end scarf for uh, samples. So this is what it looks like on a handbag. You can wrap the handles or you can also just tie a bow around one of the handles. Really cute. So there's a lot you can do with this. You can also wear these as a, a neck scarf. You could uh, use this as a hair tie, a headband like a band, you know, kind of a bandana. So a lot you can do with this particular project. Uh, but yeah, this, this I think worked out better in terms of like how many I could make per hour and what I could charge for these. This makes a lot more sense than the zipper pouches. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work out the math on this Etsy shop. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Do you like the angled ones better or do you like the ones with the like cut off blunt ends? Let me know which one you like better. And also which ones do you think will sell better, better in the Etsy shop? If you have an opinion on that, I'm, I'm curious to hear what you, what you think about all of that. Uh, but we got a lot done today. We made 11 scarves in about five and a half hours. So it's way better than spending five days making 10 zipper pouches. So I think this is a much uh, more reasonable sewing project in terms of making and selling. But let me know what you think uh, down in the comments. It's been a lot of fun. We'll be making more of these on live streams uh, in different. I do need to make a few more of these in the, you know, this navy color. Um, we'll, we'll do a few more and see how these, you know, how these do. I also ordered some packaging. So what I plan to do for the packaging I ordered these uh, cellophane self-sealing bags that are four inches by, I think, nine inches, and these should just about fit in there. I'm also gonna put some care instructions inside and uh, put a sewing report sticker on all of the packaging, you know, sort of like for branding purposes or, or like whatnot. So let me know what you think about this project. Uh, you, I will be working on an edited cut down version for those of you who just want to watch a straight up tutorial without like all the live stream stuff. Uh, so we will be doing that, but I'm going to be signing off for the evening and getting some to eat and everything. But I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Uh, just kind of a, like a sew with me kind of vibe, kind of a chill hangout. We got a lot done today and I'm pretty proud of all the progress for sure. Uh, but anyways, I hope, let me know what you think down in the chat and down in the comments. Anyways, I'm Jen with The Sewing Report, and this has been a lot of fun. I'll see you guys again in the next one, and remember, whatever you're doing, make it fun.